defying both Father Time and keying NFL defenses, Big John is off to another superb year following his unbelievable Super Bowl season of last year. Against the Cardinals last week, three touchdowns, 115 yards. There's little finesse in John, but at 235 pounds, who needs it? And Joe Theismann, who last year fulfilled a career-long ambition to quarterback a Super Bowl champion, adds the perfect blend to the Redskins' offense. Directing the Skins' ball control, never say die attack, Theismann rarely provides the opposition with a turnover. He looks for receivers such as downtown Charlie Brown, the diminutive wide receiver with a blazing speed and remarkable ability to find the open spot. Tonight, the 5-1 Redskins with the NFL's second best record meet the unpredictable Green Bay Packers led by quarterback Lynn Dickey. Dickey and the Pack under Bart Starr think big on offense, and why not? When you have receivers, including John Jefferson, Paul Kaufman, and the incomparable James Lofton, Tonight, it's the pack and a critical stay-alive game against the Washington Redskins, who are attempting to stay within one game of their division-leading Dallas Cowboys, live on ABC's Monday Night Football. The legendary Curly Lambeau Field, Green Bay, Wisconsin, a sellout crowd, 56,000-plus. They're always sold out in Green Bay. These fans love their football, and they have great memories, fond memories of those multiple championship years in the 60s, and they're all on hand tonight for Washington, and, of course, It'll be Washington and the Green Bay Packers. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford, along with O.J. Simpson and Don Meredith. Howard Cassell taking the night off, resting up from his duties on the World Series. We're looking to have a lot of fun tonight, and I'll tell you one thing about Washington, uh, O.J. You're one of the many in which you, you now have become firm believers. Well, there was a number of people skeptical about their championship last year. They felt with the abbreviated season, well, maybe their championship was a fluke, but not this year. Thus far, they've made, they made believers out of everybody. They do it the easy way, too, Juice. They just... They're bullies. I mean, they're so huge on that offensive line. Well, on offense, they're just about as good as you can get. They have the muscle. They average about 280 pounds up front. They have the muscle to run the ball. And with Joe Theismann and a host of talented receivers, hey, they can throw the ball and make the big play. Jacoby and Stark at tackles, they look like housing projects out there. They sure do. If there's any hope for the backers, it's the fact that the Redskins are rated 26 on pass defense, and that's what the Packers like to do, throw the football. And they can't throw it. The Green Bay, well, they're totally unpredictable. They're 3-3. Three and three. This is a very important game for them. But right now, you have to wonder what Bart Starr is thinking about. He was Mr. Consistency as a quarterback. He's not getting that from his team, and Don talked earlier about it with him. You know, I consider this guy, old Bart Starr, a real pal of mine, but for some reason, I've got the feeling he must be a glutton for punishment. You know, when you think about the quarterback days and now hearing the coach, they keep asking you, what happened, Bart? You know, all that, what happened? You've had a little inconsistency in the last week. Everybody wants to know why. Do you have any idea after you've had, say, six <laughs> weeks to look at why you guys seem to be kind of up and down? Don, I really don't. If we had an idea, obviously we'd correct it in a hurry. Yeah. Uh, we have been inconsistent. That's the only way to describe it. We're working to correct it because we cannot afford to be that way against a team of the caliber of the Washington Redskins. I think we're going to play well tonight. I really do. We've had a good week of work, and hopefully we'll correct some of those inconsistencies. You've had a lot of guys that have been hurt, too, Bart, and I know that's, that's got to be a problem for you. You've got, like a, I guess you'd be a third-team nose guard starting tonight. That's correct, but, Don, as you well know, uh, everyone gets people hurt in this league. Those are no excuses, and we're not going to sit on them. The people we're playing with are simply going to have to play better. <laughs> well, that's good. I hope you have a good night tonight, Bart. Thank you very much. Th thank you. You're welcome. Okay. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Light Beer for Miller. Everything you've always wanted at a beer and less by Nissan, who invites you to see the new 1984 Nissan 300ZX starting November the 14th at your Datsun dealer. And by the world's largest fitness equipment manufacturer, Diversified Products, DP, Fit for Life. And by Sears, where you'll find the things that make life worthwhile, because there's more for your life at Sears. Washington has won the toss. They will be receiving to your left. You're looking at Mike Nell, who's one of the dangerous return men in the league. And set to kick off for the Green Bay Packers will be Eddie Garcia. He handles the kickoff duties for Green Bay. Jan Stenerud, of course, a record-setting field goal kicker, will handle the field goal duties. We're underway from Green Bay. The pack against the Redskins. And rather an anticlimactic opening after such a buildup. Flags are down. The ball hooked out of bounds. And we would suspect that we will now see the Green Bay Packers back up five yards and do it all over once again. So Eddie Garcia kicking off for Jan Stenerud. Hooks it out left. And this should provide Mike Nelms an excellent opportunity for a return. Green Bay tough against the kickoff return. Their opposition in the first six games have only averaged a little over 16 yards a return. 
But Mike Nelms is third in the NFL, running it back a little over 24 yards a pop. The Redskins, again, five and one. They're trying to stay within one of the Dallas Cowboys in the NFC East. Green Bay is three and three into tonight, and they are really unpredictable. They open with a win over Houston. They lost to Pittsburgh. They beat the Rams. They lost to the Giants. They beat Tampa Bay, and they lost to Detroit last week. Since they've every, won big and they've lost big. Every other week, they get into <laughs> the sling. This, this week, they plan to win. It's tonight. supposed to be an on week for them. This is it. All right, set to go once again. Eddie Garcia, they'll kick from the 30. Nelms has moved up to about the three-yard line, and Eddie Garcia trying to get distance on it. Oh, come Hooks on, it out, Eddie. It's going to be five more yards. <laughs> That's not and what you're going to do. And I hope this is not an omen of things to come. <laughs> well, I think we're going to see Stinner Rude with another one. Third strike, and you're out. Or Bart Starr. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, we came up here in 1979, and Bart Starr, Mr. Consistency, Mr. Clean, Mr. Everything, and he coaches a little bit that way. We came up here in 1979. New England was heavily favored. And Bart Starr came out. He came out in a 3-4. He blitzed almost on every play. He ran reverses. He went on fourth down about three times. And it was a stunning upset over New England. I'm not saying that we're going to see that tonight. But Bart Starr, with the defense he has, knows he's going to have to do something a little extra special tonight. Otherwise, Washington's going to have the football all night long, and we're going to have a short game. And they're going to have it in a pretty good field position right here. All right, Eddie Garcia this time wises up, picks it high, and Nels will take it from his own 13-yard line. And good coverage. Well, that Green is Bay good. special team on the third kickoff attempt. They will have the Redskins inside the 30, and Joe Theismann comes on, having a tremendous year, perhaps the most impressive part of that those three interceptions, but he has not had an interception in 93 of his last attempts. That spans 14 quarters. The Redskins don't turn it over. John Riggins, who handles the ball most of the time, does not fumble. And they beat you with the turnover, your turnovers, and just absolute bullying you offensively. First and 10, the Redskins near their 30-yard line. Riggins left side behind Jacoby. A flag is down as Ezra Johnson strung it out for Green Bay for a loss of about a yard, but again, a flag is down. Our referee tonight is Ben Dreith. And the motion illegally against the Redskins. And it'll give us an opportunity to look at a defense that is really been hurting by injuries throughout Illegal this young motion, season. Number 87, there they are. Offense. Byron Braggs at left defensive end has replaced the departed down. Mike Butler. A nose tackle, a lot of trouble there. They're down to their third one. Good linebackers. They're very good. They're excellent. And they have to be because they get a lot of action. That's the secondary. And it's interesting that we have a pair of Mark Murphys of free safety tonight. They, of course, are no relation. Well, they could be. 28-yard line. Penalty decline. There was a loss of a little over a yard by Riggins. And Riggins will try it again. Bowling up the middle and swarming defense again by Green Bay. It'll bring up a third down and long for Joe Theismann. And we will see the third wide receiver. That will be Alvin Garrett, Joni Art Monk, and also Charlie Brown. Taking a look at number 52, George Cumby in the middle. Playing the run almost as, well, he didn't quite get all the way there, but he played the run very well, the interior of that line. One interesting thing about the Redskins, all good teams do it. They go to their strength. They ran that ball to their left, which is what they like to do, even though that's the strong side of the Green Bay Packers defense. Third down and nine. Theismann is back. Trying to get the screen off. And that uh -huh. screen intended for Joe Washington. I, that could have been a lateral. That might be. That might be, yeah. Or a fumble. What? And, and that's Mike and Douglas. Mike Douglas, the mad dog. And he likes to be called that. As and I said, two of those three plays went to the Green Bay right side, the left side of the Washington Redskins offense. And that's the strong side for the Green Bay Packers. They have Mike Douglas and the... There's the Johnson on that side, and they're their two best defensive players. Let's take a look from the end zone. Theismann trying to get the screen off, and Mike Douglas read the play all the way. He was right in the middle of it. There it is. They're calling that a completion and then a fumble. I That's bet. right. You that cannot advance a lateral. So that is a completion, a fumble, and a Green Bay touchdown. So he picked it up like a loaf of bread. That huh? dog was out there, wasn't he? <laughs> Talking about pawn in a basketball, palming one. <laughs> Jan Stenerud for the conversion. And this Packer crowd, all 56,000 of them, 
love those three offensive plays of the Redskins. Tenneru through the uprights and Green Bay without an offensive possession leads the Washington Redskins seven to nothing. Let's take a look at it once again. And Mike Douglas is one fine football player, a pro bowler from a year ago. He reads plays well. He was just sitting right out there. Ezra Johnson almost got his hand in the number 90. Good defensive coverage by Green Bay. I'll tell you, that's hard to do. Take the man down, strip the ball, that's pick right. it up, get into the end zone. <laughs> and the pack is out on top early here at Lambeau Field, Green Bay, Wisconsin. And there he is, Mike Douglas. He's given the pack a 7-0 lead. Bart Starr, of course, as a 17th round draft pick, developed into a Hall of Famer. And believe me, it is difficult to follow in the footsteps of a legend like Lim, uh, Vince Lombardi. Nelms is back again. Eddie Garcia set to kick off for the Packers who are out in front, seven to nothing. Nelms from the five yard line. And this time, Nelms picks up an opening and breaks it off out of the 40 yard line, still on his feet and sprawls out to the 45-yard line, and the Redskins roar right back. Well, you can see why those first two kickoffs were kicked out of bounds. They were trying to keep the ball away from Nums, who's a, uh, Nelms, who's a, a pro bowler the last couple of years, and I guess they figure instead of giving up the penalty, they're going to kick it to him, and they may have to go back to trying to keep the ball away from him if, in the future. Real good field position. Theisman, of course, steps into the huddle. Their single back offense. They use a lot of moving with their... Dual tight end situation. Rick Walker, usually the move man. Art Monk, however, wide receiver. He'll move also. Riggins left side and moving behind Jacoby. And this time it was George Cumbie who stepped inside, picked up Riggins, and held him to a yard pickup. You never know how long they're going to be able to maintain this enthusiasm, but I would say Bart certainly got him. He's got him juiced up, hasn't he? Juice, as yeah, they say. Well, he's got him going. But, you know, it's funny, though, uh, as we were saying earlier, a good team, as you can see, Crumbie and Douglas get in on the play. A good team will not change what they do uh, to take advantage of the other team. Sometimes they will, but the strength of the, of the Green Bay team is the right side of their defense. It was a gain of a yard. It's second down and nine. That's Monk in motion. You'll see a lot of that tonight. Theismann and right Monk is the there. Splitting his own defense. Monk came from the far side. We mentioned he... The Redskins like to use him in motion. They got him over there into his own situation, and he split the defense, and Theismann, who is throwing this year at 60%, is right on target. Straight up. I think he pretty well caught it, Frank. He just he had some time to throw, and he split that zone. The ball is really well thrown. That's a pretty long throw. Dropped right in the middle. Got in there behind Mike McCoy and in front of Mark Murphy. That's an open spot, though. That's really not a defensive coverage for either one of those guys. That was just a well-executed offensive play. Redskins first down near the 20-yard line of the pack. Early going here in the first quarter from Green Bay. Riggins on a delay. Moves back to the right. Runs into Packers. Breaks it off in the middle and gets sheer weight. Drills for about three. It'll be second down and seven. Tried to pull that big left side of the line. Looked like to get out in front of Riggins, but uh, couldn't make much headway. Riggins into tonight, 562 yards, 3-7 average, eight touchdowns. Is now the NFL's fifth all-time rusher, moving in behind Jimmy Brown. And, of course, Franco Harris and the man on my right, O.J. Simpson and Walter Payton. All right. Second down and seven. The ball close to the 17-yard line. That's Charlie Brown in motion. And quickly, the flanker screen to Brown. That's a good play. And Brown moving behind. Art Monk gets down inside the five-yard line where it'll be first down, goal to go. The Redskins do so many things. And the one thing you always notice, Don and O.J., is they do the safe things. They do. They really do. And I think, you know, one of the things, they're, they're no kind of the running, the, the big hogs up front and Riggins, of course. But... When they throw, they, it really does work. They're very effective with that. Now, those little safe patterns out there, give it to those guys. Let them make some moves. Well, they have the kind, kind of receivers that can make the move after they catch the ball. A delirium short-lived by the Packer fans as the Redskins are knocking. First down, goal to go. Riggins in the arms of Cumby. Surge down close to the two-yard line. Cumby, he, he's all over everywhere today. Yeah, he's a tough one in there. He's 6'1", 224-pounder. First round pick in 1980, and both inside linebackers, Rich Wingo and Cumbie, play the run well while 
Anderson and Douglas play the run well, but also are exceptional pass defenders. A good linebacking core. Mike McCoy saw coming in from right cornerback was also in on that tackle. They marked it at the three yard line. Second down goal to go. Joe Gibbs, the young coach of the Redskins, looking on. Wansley is in motion. Riggins. Fumble the football. The ball is loose at the goal line. The pack is saying we've got it. Of course. They're going to say Riggins, that. who just does not fumble the ball, has just coughed it up. You were talking about the lack of fumbles and interceptions beginning, but with that takeaway, giveaway thing, Frank, they're lead the league. The Redskins, Redskins are do. plus 17. That's the tops in the league, while Green Bay is minus six. Really does have an awful yeah. lot to do with it. Well, John, what he did, he saw the goal line, and he, I think he was just about to take the ball to try to stick it out there over the goal line. Redskins, if they've got it back in the end zone, we're going to have a Redskin touchdown. Well, the Packers have indicated touchdown. But the officials have not. What did appear? Well, they guess they don't have to bother. It was fumbled and recovered at the end zone, and the Redskins are on the scoreboard. Who covered it? I couldn't. I, I think it was Clint Didier, the tight end. There were a bunch of folks down there grubbing around for it. Well, that was rather anticlimactic. I couldn't even see. Okay, Bobby. Theismann will hold and Mark Mosley, two fine place kickers here tonight. High snap, Theismann quickly gets it down, and the Redskins, in short order, have tied this football game up. <laughs> it didn't take them long, did it? Good return by Mike Nelms. Theismann with a good shot to Art Monk, and then a flanker screen to Charlie Brown, and then Riggins on this play, second down, goal to go, tries to go over the top, coughs it up. Right there, he's carrying it, he's protecting it well. Hit by Wingo, who pulls it out. Wingo and Mike McCoy looks like he'll have a shot at it. That ball's lying right there. That looks like a Green Bay guy. Well, we get the official word on who has scored the Washington touchdown very shortly when we return to Green Bay, Wisconsin on a beautiful night for football. Clinton Didier, the backup tied in for the Washington Redskins, fell on John Riggins' fumble, and we have a tied game with 10:35 remaining in the first quarter. Jeff Hayes handles the kickoff chores for the Redskins, replacing Mark Mosley, the field goal kicker. Eddie Lee Ivory is deep for Green Bay, and this is a short kick. Taken there by Harlan Huckleby, and Huckleby runs into his old man as he goes down close to the 30-yard line. So offensively, we'll look at the Green Bay Packers for the first time this evening as Lynn Dickey trots onto the field, and this man, uh, well, he's a physiological marvel to begin with, but he's out there with all the things that have happened to him over his 13-year career. is a miracle, but he has had a fairly good season thus far. Got off to a tremendous start. Eight touchdown passes in his first two games. Passing at just under 66% for the season. Jerry Ellis, single setback. Play action. And right away, going deep for Lofton, and Lofton is there, uh -huh. but he doesn't hold on. That was close. Curtis that Jordan ball. back defending in the zone, and I'll tell you, Dickey had it right on the money. That he, ball should have been caught. He had split him. Splitting Vernon Dean and Mark Murphy. And you can <laughs> believe that Lawton is talking to himself now, but I got a feeling he'll have an opportunity to make amends. He might, he might. He dropped one last week. They couldn't, they couldn't believe that either. He's been zipping along here, catching everything close to him. He's got five touchdowns on the year. At three earlier in the season in a losing effort against Pittsburgh. Had a big one against the Rams of over 70 yards. Lofton, former track star, great long jumper and spinner at Stanford. Second down and 10, Dickey is back looking. Caught on the tight end, yeah. and then right on target. Oh. The first down is at the 47 yard line. Oh, I'll tell you, Curtis Jordan had him as well covered as you can ask him to. Coffin ran a fairly good route, but the real key is this throw. That thing is right on the money. Look at that. Man, that's a tight spiral out there. Ooh, boy. Wish I could throw one like that. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. you. Can't do it any better, guys. Oh, oh. Well, well, you I know, the, the Redskins have, I mean, the, the Packers have three all pro receivers, and you can expect to see the ball in the air all night by them. That basically an all pro line, however. And as you've already touched on, Dickey is not a very agile quarterback. 
John uh -huh. Jefferson, he has another Green Bay first down at Washington's 40-yard line. They're not going to leave any doubt what they had in mind right. doing coming in. They're going after that 26th-ranked pass defense in the league. Forget that number one against the rush. I'll tell you what Jefferson and Lofton both can do. They can get 10, 12, 14 yards deep so quickly that Dickey doesn't have to hold that ball before he delivers it. And the defensive backs have got to give them some room. They've got that breakaway sprinter speed, so you've got to give them some room. First and 10, near the Redskins' 40-yard line. The game tied at 7, under 10 minutes now remaining in the first quarter. That's why they Eddie don't run Right side, it's a yard, <laughs> maybe. It'll be second down and long. Well, every so often you got to run the ball, you know, to mm -hmm. make them think about it. A little bit, just a tad. Well, Eddie Lee Ivory and uh, Gary Ellis, the two backs back there, pretty good receivers, too. In fact, Gary Ellis, I think, has the record for the all time second receptions by a back here in Green Bay. So he's going to, he's got all those guys up there. Yeah. And Paul Kaufman, they're tied in. You double team Jefferson and Lofton, you better watch Kaufman. Second down nine, we'll call it. Inside handoff. This is Eddie Lee Ivory, and Eddie Lee Ivory picks up yardage to the 45 yard line. It will still leave Dickey in a passing situation with third and a long four. Eddie well, Lee think... Ivory has really been something. OJ, he came back as number one draft pick. What was it, in 79? Tore his knee up the first game, came back, had a big year in 80. Very first game against the Bears the following year, tore up the other knee. And then last year, he came back to have another good season. He can do a lot of things out of that backfield. He had an excellent year last year. He scored nine touchdowns rushing. Third down, long four. There he is. Fires and it's incomplete to Kaufman, the tight end. And the scans were doubling, trying to help Daryl Green on one corner, Vernon Dean on the other, getting single coverage against Kaufman, first down Green Bay. Kaufman's 22nd or 23rd reception now this season. The first down is inside the 27-yard line. Well, I guess it's not, uh, you can't panic this time of the game, Don, but what would you do? I mean, they got to start blitzing him or something. Well, I'd keep throwing. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw. Kaufman in motion, sets up for protection, wide open, oh, out of the boy. flat, was Mike Mead, incomplete. Could have picked up. Wasn't very well timed that time. Looked like Dickey got in a little bit of a hurry. Well, I said they had to start blitzing. They had uh, Mel Kaufman coming in on a blitz. And when you're throwing the ball this well, uh, the, the only thing the defense can do is try not to give the quarterback the time. And I think from this point on, we're going to see the Redskins doing an assortment of blitz, blitzing. And that's something that they don't normally do. Not a lot of, anyway. Yeah. Makeshift line for the Green Bay Packers. They move their right tackle. That's Greg Cook. He's starting a right guard against Big Dave Butts. They're threatening safety blitz, the Redskins. They step out of it. Dickey firing to Kaufman in the end zone, and good coverage by the Redskins. They showed blitz, got out of it, and now it will put the Packers into a third down and 10. Good time to throw. He didn't get that pressure that time. He was trying to go to Lofton, it looked like to me, and they had Lofton pretty well covered deep. Came back late trying to go to Kaufman. It's kind of a, you know, this is kind of a situation where you're, you're that second down, they're trying to score a touchdown. They've been got those 10, 12 yard patterns. That's what they're looking for right now. So they didn't go for that. They went for the big one. Dickey looks it over. The Redskins showing their 4 3. Cornerbacks right up in the face of the two wide receivers, Lofton and Jefferson. Good protection. Overthrown. Jefferson. Oh. Almost a spectacular catch, but he does not hold on, and we have sent him over his six years. Three of them with San Diego make great catches just like that. Yeah, you can't blame him at that point because he was lucky to get his hands on the ball. In any event, it looks like a flag is down in the backfield. Normally, that indicates holding, so it would have went for naught anyway. And it will be an interesting decision on the part of the Redskins. Great field goal kicker for the Packers is John Stenerud. They I found could decline the penalty and bring up a fourth down, or they could take the penalty and move Stenerud well back, and it would be third down and 20. And they'll take the penalty, backing up the pack. Holding offense, number 67. 
That is Swanke over at left tackle. He is working against Dexter Manley. No wonder he holds. Can't say that I blame him. The ball was just a little bit high, but we have seen him make catches like that. You don't realize how high he's jumped off the ground. He made it look like it was just barely overthrown. Third down and 20, and Lynn Dickey will be thinking at least get it into field goal range. They are just out of the range of Jan Stenerud. So he throws underneath. He goes to Lofton. Lofton uh, look for additional yardage. He'll get it just inside the 30-yard line, and we will see Jan Stenerud. And this will be just about Stenerud's distance. He's 7 of 8 this year with the long of 46. And, of course, became the NFL's second all-time leading scorer earlier this year, passing Jim Turner. A great veteran of so many years of Kansas City play. I recall my rookie year, we played Kansas City twice. He had 10 field goals in the two games. <laughs> he will blister you. A 47-yard attempt. Bucky Scribner, the holder. He's got the distance. Oh, he does. And he's got it through the uprights. And the Packers have taken the lead. 10 to 7. We have 6.34 in the first quarter. John Stenerud, he's now 8 of 9 on the year, hitting a 47-yarder. That's his longest of the season. There's Mike Nelms, again, providing that dangerous return of kicks for Washington. This one dribbled along the ground, taken by the big bulky lineman, out over the 35-yard line. What a weapon Nelms is, though, to affect, a, you know, that big part of the game on kickoffs. They won't even kick to him. So <laughs> that's really wild. That was Cronin, the linebacker, on the short kick. And Eddie Garcia now has kicked two of them out of bounds to get this game underway. He kicked the short one. And the Redskins have good field position at the 35-yard line. The Redskins, packed with single back offense. Play action by Theismann. Uh, this one was almost picked off by Mike Douglas. Boy, he tended it for Charlie Brown, incomplete. Oh, I think they're going to learn a lesson in a minute and start coming on this side of the field. <laughs> You've been calling for the right side. All yeah, right. I think they're going to come over here a little bit. That was a great <laughs> drop by Douglas that time from his linebacker position. It's a good angle out there. You can be off one step, and you have no, no shot at being able to knock that little pass down, but he was right in the line of flight. A little trivia on Douglas. He's only 6 foot, 215 pounds, but he high jumped 6 8 at San Diego State was a 50-foot triple jumper. Yeah, I like I like trivia like that. That's good, good athlete. Yeah. Mike Douglas, the Green Bay. Blitz is on. Second down and 10. Theismann, good effort by Art Monk. He was deep and he came back knowing Theismann was in trouble, gave Theismann a target, and Monk gets the first down in Packer territory. Let's take a look at it. An unusual way. We'll watch Theismann. We'll watch the two wide receivers, Monk on the right, and up at the left, the other wide receiver for the Redskins, Charlie Brown. And you'll see Theismann do something that is a, effective against a, 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 a blitz. He rolls out to his other side. His line comes across to him. He rolls out to the right. He looks around, and his receiver, Art Monk, been an experienced receiver, came back to the ball and made a very successful play out of it. First down, Green Bay's 43-yard line. Charlie Brown, the motion man now for the Redskins. Riggins countering to the left. Riggins <laughs> steps to the right, and by the time he gets that big body moving left, the pack had penetrated over on the right side. Wingo in there as the key stopper for Green Bay, number 50. How many times do you have to run like that, O.J., before you start asking yourself, who are those guys? <laughs> yeah, well, at most backs, the more they get the ball, the more they figure out what the defense is doing. And uh, right now, he probably can't figure it out. They own him so tough. <laughs> They're on him, boy. Yeah, but I'm sure he wants the ball still. Second down and 10. Reagan, seven carries, eight yards. Walker in motion. Riggins. This time he finds an opening and bulls his way inside the 35-yard line. He'll be short of the first down by about a half a yard. And the Redskins will trot out their short yardage offense. Let's take a look at the end zone replay. He really didn't think he had room out there. He did a little hesitation, and by doing the hesitation, he held a defensive men, gave his offensive lineman a chance to get position, and uh, good back that he is, he found the hole and ran good and tough. How'd you like to be a little Johnny Gray, the secondary? He's a 5'11", a 200-pounder, but when Riggins gets it going north and south, he's got a lot of body behind it. Third down and one. 
Who else? Wiggins. Hey, I possibly will have the first down. He was hit and hit hard, but he had moved through a hole provided by Joe Jacoby, or actually just a blow off the line by Joe Jacoby. And it's first down Washington. This is what the Packers are going to try and avoid. Washington just grinding it out, throwing the ball in short, and letting Riggins do the heavy work. They can keep the ball all day on a team that can't stop Riggins. And the minute you start bringing your safeties up to help stop that run, they'll burn you with those receivers. First down and 10. Near Green Bay's 38-yard line, the Packers lead 10 to 7. Riggins and strung out again. Good play by uh, yeah. Johnny Gray. And then he got help from inside Rich Wingo and Mike Douglas. Strung out beautifully. We've got a second down and 14. Oh, what a formation that is. Guys been back. Has the time. Oh, and yeah. That was Gia Quinto out of the backfield. You saw him in motion. The former Dolphin picked up in 1981. He works so well out of the backfield. Good receiver, good hands, and he has an instinct for a receiver. Let's look at him again from the ground level. Let me tell you, I played this game a long time, and I can't tell you what formation they were in. They literally lined up four receivers on the right side, and Gia Quinto was in motion and he just ran straight down the sideline and beat the coverage and really makes a nice over the shoulder catch here. That ball was right in there too. Mark Murphy 37 you see. Gio Quinto just outran him. Tribute to Joe Gibbs the fine young coach. He'll move people around until he gets the right person on the right defender. Riggins right side first down goal to go inside the five close to the four. It'll be second and goal. Wingo again defensively. I mentioned that Riggins seldom ever fumbles the ball. In the last three years, coming into the night, Riggins had handled the ball 682 times with only five fumbles. Now that's one fumble every 136 times he carries the football. And OJ, you know that's that's something. <laughs> it's amazing when you consider he's the oldest running back in football today, in pro ball today, and he's carrying the ball 25 times a game and not fumbling the ball. It's it's really amazing. Second down, goal to go. The ball at the four-yard line. Theisman, good play action to Riggins. The Theisman in trouble, and he'll be sacked. Outside the 15 again, Mike Douglas. And getting help from John Anderson. Mike Douglas everywhere tonight. I tell you, Mike Douglas normally is everywhere. And if he was playing in New York, L.A., he may get the recognition he deserves, but he's been playing this type of football year in and year out. He beats his blocker on the blitz, forces Theisman around. It's a credit to Theisman. He was able to beat the tackle, but... He had help from John Anderson to finish him off. 13-yard loss. The ball back at the 15-yard line. I think I would have given it to Riggins again because when he fumbles, he fumbles for touchdown. <laughs> you yeah. see it so often. The many personnel changes offensively and defensively. Theisman was not happy with it. He calls timeout. One minute remaining in the first quarter. Frank Gifford along with O.J. Simpson and Don Meredith. The five and one Redskins taking on the Green Bay Packers. They're three and three in a topsy-turvy season for the Pack. Theismann has talked it over with Joe Gibbs, who has probably consulted Jerry Rome up in the press box. They've made their decision. Third down, goal to go. The ball near the 15-yard line. Joe Washington, 25, good receiver out of the backfield for the Redskins. is in the lineup. Nick Giaquinto, another good receiver in motion. There he is. Nice oh, man. And Ezra Johnson, the leading pass rusher for the pack for the past two or three years, swarms all over Theismann, moving right around Joe Jacoby, the huge offensive tackle on the left side for the Redskins. He got such a quick jump on Jacoby. I mean, you talk about he just guessed just right. Got a good start. Jacoby really didn't move. He was around him before Jacoby had a chance to step back at all. 42-yard field goal attempt by Mark Mosley. 12 of 15, leading the NFL in scoring after six games, and he is dead solid perfect. We've got a tied football game with 38 seconds remaining in the first quarter. 
but the Packers showing surprising strength on defense. Ezra Johnson got his seventh sack of the season coming into tonight. Green Bay in six games only had 10 sacks. They have two in the first quarter of this game. And if they're going to win tonight, they're going to have to continue to play the kind of defense they're playing. Jeff Hayes to kick off. Harlan Huckleby is deep for Green Bay. Huckleby from the nine yard line. Harlan out to the 25. Goes Harlan Huckleby. They'll mark it at the 26th. A lot of action here in the early going. If you just joined us, it was Green Bay getting on the scoreboard first. Mike Douglas stripping a receiver, ambling in on the fumble. <laughs> what a difference that a few years, years make. And what a difference in terms of zippers on this man's body. At the 26 yard line, the Packers first down and 10. The game tied at 10. Dickey. Good defense. Tries to oh. squeeze it into Paul Kaufman, and all over Paul Kaufman was Curtis Jordan. And he was a good defensive play. <laughs> he did come across and knock it down. Couldn't see from this angle too well. Evidently, he hit him before the ball got there. It looked like he was taking a piggyback ride on Kaufman. Pass interference number 22. That's a first down. I'll tell you, this is one place for the Redskins, and you have to consider that they have lost Tony Peters as we look again and Curtis Jordan and Ken Coffey battle for that strong safety spot which Tony Peters held down so well of course Peters pleading guilty to drug charges yet a suspended sentence for four years and he will have a hearing very shortly with Commissioner Roselle to see if he can return to action on first down and ten Lofton with a uh, great yes. move and the about the most beautiful timing pattern you'll ever see huge Square out, Dickey holding it, firing it on the break, right into the arms of Lofton. Yeah, I was wondering if the flag would be thrown on that. Last week we saw a very dangerous face mask call that really, really hurt Mr. Ken Anderson. He didn't pull his face mask, but he caught him by the back of the helmet and tackled him with the back of the helmet. Now we get the call. It's a late call by the side judge, I think. And there will be additional yardage, but watch this now. Don, I'll tell you, Dickey, as Lofton goes with the sprint, has got that ball in the air before he makes the break. It was a heck of a move by Lofton. You ever see a head move and a slowdown move like that, Don? It was good, but look here. Dickey gets hit. Now, wow, he's all spread out, and that's the other end of that thing. And you're right. That ball was thrown right on the money. Dickey is really sharp tonight. It's as sharp as I've seen him. And the personal foul against the Redskins moves the ball to the 26-yard line. But well, let me tell you, the Redskins are a very difficult team to score on within the 20-yard line, much yard line, much like the Miami Dolphins used to be. I think the last time they came down, you saw Green Bay try to go to the end zone from here, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him try it again. Green Bay on the roll. Well, Dickey bobbles the ball, trying to get it back to Harlan Huckleby on the toss. Slipped out of his hands, and the loss is back close to the 37-yard line. Those are those kind of things that you do. They're so silly, you can't believe they ever happen, but he just dropped the ball sometime. Looked like maybe he didn't get a good snap from center, but he turns around and all of a sudden has no handles on that ball. Final seconds ticking away here in the first quarter. Green Bay will not get a playoff. A lot of action here in the first quarter. The Redskins 10, the Packers 10, and we'll be back. Curly Lambeau Field in Green Bay in a moment. For Green Bay tonight, the rushing game is incidental. They're going against the top rushing defense in the entire NFL in the Washington Redskins. But every now and then you throw one in there just to let those big dudes over the other side know you will run around occasion. It's second down and 20 for the Packers as we begin the second quarter. Dickey Kaufman is there. This will be six. All right. Paul Kaufman got individual coverage on Curtis Jordan as they tried to double up on the outside receivers, Jefferson and Lofton, and he wiped out Jordan. Six points, Green Bay. You kind of get the feeling they may have isolated old Curtis Jordan back there. You see a lot of passes going in his area. Well, the Packers knew that they couldn't win a low-scoring game. The only way they can win this game is to score a lot of points and look at a beautiful move gave him a little inside move to hold him and broke for the flag and once again that pass was right there on right on the money and that's a big man that made that little head fake move to the inside that froze Jordan he turned it on plenty of room for Dickey he was right on target 
Here's Stenerud with the conversion. And the Packers once again are on top. Looks like we got a track meet going here. Oh, it's fun. I like it. I'll tell you, if the Redskins don't get to Dickey and they can't control the ball, Dickey's going to have himself another great night. Let's see the reverse angle on this. Actually, Jordan should have made the tackle. I'm sure they're going to tell him on the sideline, uh, you're a beat, that's one thing, but you can't let him run in the end zone. <laughs> he couldn't well catch up with him. The there first play of the second quarter, Green Bay retakes the lead. One of the five championships won by Vince Lombardi was in 1967. Vince Lombardi was here. Don Meredith uh, I, was a quarterback for the Cowboys. I was here. Right. I was here, and my coffee was freezing. <laughs> I think my mother was carrying me then. It wasn't my coffee that was freezing. <laughs> oh, boy. 18 below zero it was when they kicked that game off. Eddie Garcia to kick off for Green Bay. A quick look at Mike Mills. Garcia, high, short kick. This is Reggie Evans. And Reggie Evans out to the 34-yard line. Where did O.J. say he was? Did he make a little snide remark? I thought like he did. Back home with mother and stuff like that. Oh, I don't know. Was I born then? I mean, oh, was, God. You're talking some years now. Yeah. <laughs> Just seems only yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How about the day before yesterday? The day before yesterday. 67. I remember they brought me a cup of coffee that game. I put it on the windowsill, and I had to take a bite out of it. <laughs> tell you what, there goes Riggins again. On first down and 10. Jerry Rome, who is the fine assistant coach for Washington, was playing on that same team, too, with the Cowboys. And he was telling me before the game, he said, what I remember was that I have to go back up in the stands and plug in the heaters because they had the heaters down there, and it was plugged it up in the stands. And people kept unplugging those heaters. And Jerry said, I spent all day going, crawling back over that rail going up in the stands and plugging in the heaters again. I knew he was working. I mean, it was a team effort. <laughs> Got a shaken up Redskin getting a look see from the training core of the Redskins. It's Russ Grimm, their offensive left guard. Take a look at the first quarter numbers. Okay. We were going to take a look at those numbers. There, there they are. are right now. Time of possession. A lot of Washington, but Green Bay got the big plays. Mm -hmm. Minus five yards for Green Bay rushing. But as I said before, they didn't come here to rush. Not when you have Jefferson, Lofton, and Kaufman. Riggins got three, and it was second down at seven. Roy Simmons has come in a left guard, number 60 for the Redskins. Riggins. Short of the first down, but not by much, as he gets over the 42-yard line. The Redskins kind of have two different kinds of rushing offenses. One, of course, is Riggins. But what's happened this year has really helped them a lot, is they could put another type of running attack, and that's with Joe Washington. Much smaller back, quicker. And if Riggins can't bust it up the middle, they may bring Washington in around the little while, he'll start going around the ends. Yeah, plus he's so dangerous coming out of the backfield, you know. Two big reception touchdowns against the Raiders a few weeks ago. I remember on Monday Night Football, Joe Washington had one of the better games. Frank, was, what year was Never it? Never forget it. It was uh, New England in 78. He, he played for Baltimore, Baltimore. then. He, yeah. he had 260 yards of offense, ran back a kickoff, in scored rain. a touchdown, and threw another touchdown. <laughs> it was pass. unbelievable. And yeah. it was raining cats and dogs. Third, you saw how much, less than a yard to go. Watch number 44. They usually come left, and they do. Big opening for Reagans. Super Bowl revisited. And Riggins explodes behind big Joe Jacoby, getting all the way down inside the 25-yard line. And so often you see that on third and short because when you get through that line, there are no linebackers, and you have got a sprint on. Well, you said it right. It was Super Bowl revisited. It was the same situation, short yardage, and they ran a real nice play to their left side, a real nice block by Rick Walker. And Riggins amazes me at 34 years of age. He's probably still running under 10 flat. As a high school athlete, he ran 9-8 at Kansas. And he doesn't look like he's slowed up. He said he was going to come back in the best shape of his life this year. If the Redskins didn't make it to the Super Bowl, they wouldn't say it was because of Riggins. And he is in tremendous shape and having a great year. 
They've got it marked at the 23-yard line. First and 10, Washington. Riggins again, again left side. And Riggins just bowling ahead down close to the 17-yard line for a gain of about five before Byron Braggs was there defensively for Green Bay. Reagans, of course, came to Washington in 76 after five years at the Jets after a couple of thousand yard seasons up there. He was quite a character up there. He seemed to have mellowed since he's been with the Redskins. Now they asked him one time if he was different. He said, well, I don't know whether I'm ahead or behind, but I know I'm not in step. Reagans left side fake and Theismann rolls out wide open. He finds the receiver. Down inside the five yard line. Big tight end. The big tight end. I mean, you have to admire Washington. They, they can do so many things. They fake the counter play. They send Theismann out, outside there all by himself, really. He didn't have a blocker come out with him. He finds a tight end. They, they can beat you so many ways. They move the pocket around. They throw deep. They throw short. And they can muscle you. You got a big play like Riggins broke in that third and one. And Green Bay starts thinking, well, I got to come up here and help out the line, the secondary, I mean. And then you can see Joey Theismann come back with play action. And they get the ball to Don Warren for a first down goal to go. Riggins, left side. And he just surged into the end zone. Redskins are indicating touchdown, but they're going to mark it short. Talk about the play action pass. You couldn't ask for a better runner to run that play action, action pass off of after you faked it to Riggins because they, they expect him to carry it every time anyway. I'd get it to him again, don't you think, right there? I got a feeling they're going to. I don't know. Thousand might be working on statistics. <laughs> Packers on top, 17 to 10. <laughs> We're in the second quarter with a little more than 11 minutes remaining in the first half. And the Redskins threatening to tie it up. Riggins. Wansley oh, leads yeah. Riggins into the end zone. Touchdown, Washington. I think Riggins will wait till they get a nice lead before he starts working on statistics. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he just seems to get stronger, even at 34, as the game grows on. Talking to, to Jerry Rome before the game, he says it's amazing. They really do. Riggins kind of comes in. He says he's really a different kind of cat. Says you yeah. never met anybody like him, but he'll come in and before the game, he says, "Yeah, give it to me 30 times." So they give it to him 30 times. I said, "What would you do if they if he said give it to me three times?" He said, I guess we just give it to him three times. He does what he wants to. Mosley puts the tying conversion point on the scoreboard, and we've got a 17-17 lock here in Green Bay, Wisconsin, between the Packers and the Redskins, and we'll be right back. That's Don Riggins on the sidelines, who has just tied this football game up from in short. This kind of football game will put punters out of work. <laughs> they have not had a punt yet. They've scored on every possession. Harlan Huckleby deep for Green Bay. Jeff Hayes to kick off. And this will be Huckleby from the two-yard line. And Huckleby out close to the 23-yard line. Let's pause five seconds and allow our stations all along the line to identify themselves. Thank you for the with O.J. Simpson and Don Meredith. Howard getting a little breather after the World Series coverage. And a game that opened in rather startling fashion. Green Bay getting on the scoreboard. Mike Douglas taking a fumble in. Didier came back and recovered a Riggins fumble for Washington. That tied it at 7. Jan Stenerud hit a field goal to make it 10-7 Green Bay. He's tied at 10 when Mosley answered that field goal. Lynn Dickey hit Kaufman. 17-10. Riggins on a touchdown. And this uh -huh. is Gary Ellis. Or James Lofton. I tell you, on that last play, Mill Kaufman saved the touchdown. He made a heck of a play, didn't he? <laughs> Second down and four. Mike Mead. Big opening left side, and Mead will have the first down out close to the 40 yard line. Now that helps their business a lot. They've had a minus rushing yardage in the first quarter. Just run it every now and then. Just so they, as you say, you know they can't. I think the main reason they're running is to try to give their receivers some rest. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very talented lady. That's the wife of James Lofton, Beverly Lofton. James and Beverly have a, their own syndicated TV show. She has been an actress, a model, and she's also a lot of fun. Yeah, you say talented. She's gorgeous also. 
39 yard line, first down 10 Green Bay. Often in motion, sets up the help block. Wide open is Jerry Ellis. Ellis down the sideline, looks at the first down marker, gets the first down in Washington Territory at the 49, and there's a little hassle going on back at the 30 yard line. Dexter Manley's right in the middle of it, so evidently they didn't like what happened back there. Dexter's saying they're holding him, of course. He is talking to Carl Swanke, the left offensive tackle for Green Bay, whose principal role tonight is keeping Dexter Manley off the back of Lynn Dickey. Well, well, he's done a good job. We yeah. haven't heard from him until right now. I don't think they're accustomed to having a team go up and down the field on him like this, even though the Raiders did score 35 points, I guess, a few weeks ago. But defense have a lot of pride. They don't like to be moved on like this. Green Bay in Washington Territory once again. Mead in motion, and here comes Eddie Lee Ivory. Ah. And he's met quickly. Big day, but pulling out from his defensive tackle was there first. 6'7", 295 pounds, Dave Butts. And he's having a great year. Good move by Oklowitz that time, coming into the middle linebacker position. Made a good move to at least slow him down. Well, it looked like it was going to be a pretty good play until Oklowitz came through there and forced him upfield. Found a little crack in the line and just shot through. Hate those middle linebackers. Of I'll course. You. Get to know them well. <laughs> the Redskins fans, Monty Coleman was activated tonight. Good pass defending linebacker has been out for the first six games. Dickey back, second down and ten. Hoffman is wide open once again, and Coughlin will have a first down. He's at the 30-yard line. They are putting that ball right on the money. That's the passing team that lived up to the pregame billing for Green Bay. Well, Dexter, uh, I don't know what argument he had to play before, but Dexter is laying on the field right now. Mr. Manley looks like he's uh, injured. Here's a replay of it. We'll see. The surprising thing right now is that Dickey is getting this much time to pass. He is, and he's putting it right on the money. Good. That Kaufman is going to be, I think, a big cog in the game plans tonight because they are still trying to double them on the outside. Believe me. More seriously, Dexter Manley is down at the 42-yard line. The line of scrimmage, he's being treated there. And we'll be returning to Green Bay in just a few moments to get a report. As you can see, he's on his feet. I'm sure we'll see Dexter Manley very shortly. The fine pass rushing defensive end for the Redskins. He left the field, as you saw, just before we went away. Sickly under his own locomotion and he appears to be all right Green Bay has a first down and 10 Kaufman gets the first down in the 30 yard line of the Redskins Ivory and down goes Ivory good defensive play it was moving up quickly okay. Curtis Jordan once again Okowitz was out there you can't run the football unless you block the Mike man that's what we call the middle linebacker the Mike man and he was out there clean and he was a guy that kept him from turning up and gave, gave the safety time to come up and make the tackle. I always wonder, you know how they call it, in Dallas, they call the middle linebacker Meg and the weak side linebacker Wanda and well, Sarah. Well, Dallas. You know, but, Dallas yeah, is, why in the way you call those guys Sarah, Meg, well, and Wanda? Uh, <laughs> I tell you, they're going to have to change that in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. They're going to have a lot of problems. This second down and 12. Come on, Wanda. Dickey rolling out, runs into trouble, and he uh, had to unload it for uh, screen pass for Kaufman. Screen, and he didn't have a screen man out there to receive it uh, other than Kaufman. Maybe he was the intended receiver. Tremendous pressure on Dickey as the Redskins brought everyone. It was unfortunate that they couldn't get the ball to Kaufman because it was the perfect defense to run it against. Uh, the Redskins was blitzing everybody, and if Kaufman caught the ball, he would have had three blockers and one guy between him and the goal line. It's one of the things you have to do on a screen. You say, you know, sure, you're going to fake block, but hit him a little bit. Just slow him down. <laughs> they didn't slow him down up there. Third down and 13. And the scans will be coming. Dickey right into the arms of the Redskin defender. That's Tony Washington back there in the nickel defense. The intended receiver was Paul Kaufman. Dickey again under pressure as the Redskins front four blowing over the offensive line of the pack. Made Dickey release it before he wanted to. Well, let me tell you, James Lofton, I think, is one of the great receivers in this game, but it appeared from this point of view that he could have got his hands on that ball. Let's take a look. He's trying to hit Lofton coming across the middle. 
No, it was out in no, front of him. No, it may have been out in front a little too much. Well, he got a little, it was not that kind of pressure that really gets in your way. It's that kind of pressure you feel coming from that backside. <laughs> Scared so him. Tony Washington gets another Redskin turnover. They've had a lot of them this year. They get the football back at their own 29 yard line. Eight minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the first half from Green Bay, Wisconsin. The ball at the 29 yard line as Tony Washington turns it over, giving the interception from Liam Dickey. First time today, Green Bay lost their serve. That's right. <laughs> Heisman on first down. They like to throw it on first down. You just saw the graphic. He almost Intended got it back. Receiver, Art Monk. They almost got their serve right back, looked like to me. That ball was not very well thrown that time. That'll bring up second down at 10. Bart Starr now in his ninth year. Made the playoffs last year, but prior to that, had only one winning season. That was in 78. He struggled up here. He carries a lot. You know it hurts. Second and 10. This is Joe Washington. Oh. Washington tripped up. Good play. Guess who? Mike Douglas. Douglas. I'm telling you, he's moved over to the left side now, hasn't he? He moves everywhere. <laughs> Look out, Mad Dog. You got him going. You know, you say that Bart Starr made the playoffs once. I'm going to ask you a question about quarterbacks coaching. I can't understand why they haven't been better coaches. Oh, I know? see. Well, look at Maddo. Then nobody could block yeah. him. Boy, he's quick. He really is. He went back with that little, what he thought was going to be a pass. Came back in and covered it off. Loss of three. It'll be third down, 13. Green Bay, not a famed pass rush. They'll try and put pressure on Theisman, however. Theisman, good mobility. He'll pick up the first down. And good move by the get out of bound. Deisman spotted the first down marker, got out over the 40-yard line, and gets out of a third and 13 situation. And he did have pressure. It forced him out of the pocket. Let's take a look at it. I think it was Arizona Johnson that was all over him. Well, or company. Let's take a look. One of them is coming back in there. That's Ezra's number 90 that's right first. there. Ezra was there, and he's chasing him. And as we said, Theismann is an excellent runner. He ran 15 punts back for this Washington team when he first came back from Canada. Well, I forgot about that. He did, didn't he? He was a yeah. punt returner. So he had Sonny and Billy there. First down, Washington. Their own 42-yard line. 7.23 remaining in the half. Washington, the reverse is to Art Monk, and picked up red beautifully. Byron Braggs pursued it and takes Monk down for a loss inside the Redskins' 30-yard line. Not only does Green Bay appear fired up, they appear, they appear totally prepared for this team. They don't seem to be fooled by anything. They're ready for them, right? That's right. Well, Bart said that to you in the interview. Bart wouldn't lie to me, would he? <laughs> Bart wouldn't lie. Byron Braggs, defensive left end, came out to allow the pass rushing specialist come in, Ron Spears. Second down, 19. Heisman back, prevent defense by Green Bay, and he throws underneath to Joe Washington. And Washington stays on his feet, getting away from one Green Bay tackler, Mark Lee and gets back to the 43-yard line, a gain of 10. Quite. Joe Washington is something. You touched on it, Don, how nifty he is, but he had both knees operated on during the offseason. He had one when he came up years ago as a top draft pick of the San Diego Chargers. But he is back, and he is an effective weapon out of that backfield. Call it third down and eight as the ball is placed just over the 43-yard line. Tie game at 17. He's got him. Ties oh. down. That and ball was not thrown very well that time. Tell you, the rookie number one draft pick from Pittsburgh, Tim Lewis, stepped right in front of the intended receiver, Charlie Brown, and Theismann really could not get it into Charlie Brown, and the Redskins will have to provide the evening's first punt. That could be a psychological victory for them by themselves. I would think so. So we watch Jeff Hayes. He leads the NFL in what they call a pooch kick, <laughs> kicking it high and getting it down inside the 20, but he'll be able to kick away on this one as Phil Epps, a great little return man, 
He had to win 90 yards for a touchdown against Tampa Bay earlier. He's back for Green Bay. Hayes doesn't turn it over, doesn't get it high enough, and here comes Epps. There's some speed for you. Look out. He could have oh. got around that corner. The little man runs about a 9 200. Dickey fires one incomplete and gets the ball out to John Jefferson. He's right there close to first down yardage, maybe a little short. At this rate, Dickey may erase every passing record in the history of the NFL. <laughs> I mean, he is dead on the money tonight. They're going to measure Jefferson very close. Dickey now 9 of 14, 144 yards. Had that one interception. But he was dead on the money with that one, too. He had about a 60-yarder he didn't get when uh, when Lawson dropped the pass. <laughs> He's been right on the money. As you can see, Jefferson is running just a actually a little stop pattern there, a little hook pattern. Comes back to the ball real well and done what he he's done so well for the last five and a half years. He just watches it, watches it right into his hands. He does. The ball in the 37-yard line of Green Bay, first and ten. The old flea flicker. Dickey won't have time to throw it. He right. wanted to go deep as Dexter Manley hammers Dickey out of bounds at the 42-yard line, but there will be a gain of four. <laughs> that play was designed it sure was. to go back to Dickey, who was going to go deep to the tight end Kaufman. And he had Lofton down there, too, but that, you're right. He said he saw Dexter there close. He said, I'm getting out of here quick as I can, and he didn't get there quick enough. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Washington run that play later to try to hit Theismann and let Theismann run with the ball. Let's Actually, take a look Kaufman. at it again. Now, there's Ivory. This has got to be a lateral, and yeah. it is. Not a good one. Dickey. Smells the hot breath of Dexter Manley on his back. Says, hey, I want the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> you can bet they didn't want him to run with it. Eddie Lee Ivory on second down and six. And Eddie Lee Ivory looking for first down yardage out through the 47-yard line. Darrell Grant defensively there. A little quick traps. Yeah, a little 40, what we call a 41 trap over the middle. But You know, that's what I think if, if a team doesn't run too well, that to me is the best kind of run they can hit because these guys are expecting you to throw. So go get a quick move from that defensive line. Just hit them real quick, like come up in the middle. That's a good stat right there. No fumbles for Eddie Lee and 104 carries. Yeah, he'll fumble the next time he carries. No, 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 no. <laughs> no First and not. 10, 47 yard line, Green Bay. Flag was down. You saw the movement. Wide open is Jefferson. Another flag is down, and we could have offsides. Washington holding Green Bay. Holding Green Bay is one of them. Well, that was a quick holding uh, penalty. They must have grabbed him at the line of scrimmage. scrimmage. That flag flew in a hurry. Well, they had two flags down, one at the line of scrimmage. You saw the movement on the left side of Washington. Offensive line. holding number 68. Defense jumped in the neutral zone. We're going to play it over. I uh, see. All right, Ben Drath, we're with you. We'll play it over. And That's Green Bay fair. would like to play it over. They had Jefferson all the way down inside the 35 yard line. Well, in the preseason, we, we saw Washington play, and we felt they would have some problems with their defensive secondary. Since the season began, they've been playing, oh, I guess, decent, enough to win anyway. They're 5-1, and one, even though they are rated 26. The Packers are taking full advantage of whatever problems they have in that secondary tonight. On first down, once again, Dickey. Jefferson. If he caught that. And he, he was pushed that? out of bounds by the defender, so he did not have to come down with both feet in bounds. Yeah. And he's just short of the first down. Can't believe he held on to the ball. What an That's unbelievable what makes him So special. Most Work. speed guys you get, they have average hands. Here's a guy who has hands first. Working against Daryl Green. Look at that. Mm. Gosh, up in the air. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. He had one foot down, but Daryl Green had pushed him out of bounds, so he did not have to come down with two feet inbounds. Gain of eight. It'll be second down and two. That's sure pretty, wasn't it? I like to see things like that. Ellis tries to slip for the first down. He'll be close. Again, dependent upon the mark of the ball. <laughs> And he'll be short by about a half a yard. 
Well, this is just about the first third and short Green Bay's had tonight. I don't believe in those. <laughs> those are too hard. I'll tell you, he's short by a full yard, and that's not very comfortable. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Dickey, given the permission, a little play action and try to go with the big one. Nope. They'll take it outside. Yep. Yep. And here they go, and the man's wide open. It's Kaufman. He can get up, and Kaufman's still on his feet. Inside right. the 10-yard line. I love it. Oh, I do, too. <laughs> it's my Eddie kind of Ivory football. faking the end run, third and short. All alone was Paul Kaufman. This is fun football. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. You said you wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Bart Starr is pulling them all out of there tonight. Well, that's old Sneaky Snelker that's calling those plays, Bob <laughs> Snelker. Bob Snelker. Hey, by the way, Bob had his 55th birthday yesterday, so we're going to congrats. That's the first. That's a birthday present. I'll he tell did you, a that good was a job good, good job by putting the ball Ivory. away. To make it look like a pass. And can you get any more open than this? Well, the ball could have been about three yards further and he would have walked in. But So we have two minutes. We'll get the two-minute warning. And Green Bay is down there threatening again. The score tied at 17. It'll be first down. Goal to go. Green Bay at the nine. Now, a lot of action here in Green Bay. And they do have the star. Bart Starr, of course. The Green Bay Packers also have a three and three record on this season. Washington has a five and one. Green so, Bay with a win tonight. They stay one game behind the Minnesota Vikings, a team that they will entertain here this coming Sunday. And the Green Bay Packers have a first down goal to go on a superb third and one call. It was Eddie Lee Ivory to the tight end Paul Kaufman. They're at the nine yard line. They're not planning on running it in. Why should they? Complete. Paul Kaufman's having himself a night. He is the And Curtis Jordan is too, but it's the opposite <laughs> side of night. Well, when you play with John Jefferson, James Lofton, and still get the respect that Paul Kaufman has around this league, you know that you're doing it something right. Let's take a look at it from a ground level here. Kaufman just ran right down the field, turned outside. Dickey put the ball right on the money, right between the eight and the two. <laughs> Kaufman, sixth reception, 123 yards, two touchdowns. And we've got action left here in the second quarter. Six. I do enjoy these kind of games. They're fun, aren't they? They really are. Just put that ball up in the air, do a little razzle-dazzle. I tell you, there's going to be a lot of Washington players. They'll go in the locker room. They'll be looking at Richie Pettibon, their coach, saying, Coach, <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> what should we do? Who are those guys? They're trying to double up on Jefferson and Lofton, trying to handle Coffin with a linebacker and the strong safety, Curtis Jordan. And Stenaru drills it through the uprights. And the Packers again have the lead in a seesaw battle. Eddie Garcia will kick off. Mike Nelms is back for Washington. Not showing a great deal of respect for distance as Nelms is up around the 10-yard line. And he takes it at the 13. Mike Nelms back close to the 30-yard line with 150 remaining in the first half. 17-yard return. And let's see what we can pick up from here. It was... Uh, See the middle linebacker go to the left. Dickey's looking to his right all the way. That's where Kaufman's got really man to cut man man coverage on Curtis Jordan, 22. He's a strong safety. He didn't have much help there, and that's a hard man to cover. Hey, Kaufman is not a Keller Winslow, but he has the same shiftiness, the same moves. I'm amazed at his ability to run after he catches the ball. Guys, on first down. He wants yardage. Joe Washington. He'll step out of bounds, stopping the clock at 1.43, out over the 37-yard line. I have the feeling that you're going to see a little more of Joe Washington in the second half. I wouldn't be surprised, too. Or at least blend him in there a little bit more. Let him do that little flip pass out to the outside. He hasn't picked up a lot of yardage with it, but just the fact that he can get it out there is not a bad place to have that ball. You may recall it was Del Theisman who had to use one of his timeouts earlier because of personnel problems. So the Redskins, with 1.43 remaining in the half, have two timeouts. There's Theismann. Looks over a second down and two. A lot of time for Theismann. Yes, Washington. He He'll get the first. I don't know where they got it. He almost ran back, didn't he? He tried to kill the clock to conserve those timeouts, and he is very close, was very close to 
losing that first down yardage. Yeah, well, 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 it was like a kamikaze mission. He knew they would beat in on him, <laughs> and it was could he get out of bounds before they hit him? And at the last minute, he did a little wiggle there, but it looks as if he still got the first down. He did the well-advised thing. <laughs> Nobody volunteers for kamikaze missions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. now you got to be serious. <laughs> certainly not Joe Washington. Yeah, sir. Well, that man's a cerebral player as well. <laughs> Joe Gibbs, what a remarkable record this man has. Redskins right now on a five-game winning streak. They won 13 of the last 14, 20 of the last 22. <laughs> on first and 10, Theismann screen. Joe Washington, he doesn't handle incomplete. You know, stops 129. The only game Washington lost was our first Monday night game, and that was just one of the strangest games we've seen. They just did everything right the first half, came roaring out, blowing everybody away, came back second half. We saw a whole new ball game. Really messed up Dallas, too. They <laughs> thought that's the way you're supposed to play. That's right. Got Dallas off to a real strange start. <laughs> well, Dallas played well yesterday. I saw that ball game. They had things clicking. We'll see a good ball game next Sunday when they play the Raiders, because that's a good team oh, coming boy, to town. telling me. There'll be some fur flying down there. Second down and 10. Oh. Redskins near their own 40 yard line. Heisman again, a lot of time, gets it deep, goes to Charlie Brown, and Charlie Brown will have the first down down at the 43 yard line. And now, Joe Theisman will use one of the two remaining timeouts. So he'll be down to one timeout. We'll have highlights for you at halftime, but let's take a look at some other games coming your way. Let's pick up the action. And it was Ray Washing with six field goals yesterday. And we're going to pick up action in the third quarter. New Orleans with the football. Stabler is back. And watch this. Dwight Hicks is also back. He steps in front of the Stabler pass. He goes 62 yards for the touchdown. And that brought the 49ers out on top 22 to 13. And believe you me, these 49ers are back, and they're for real. Now let's go to fourth quarter action. The score 25-13, the 49ers leading. Joe Montana out to Wendell Tyler, who came back for just a matter of weeks from a dislocated shoulder, and believe me, he is the spark plug for that offense. 34-yard touchdown, and Wendell Tyler is back, and so are the 49ers. The 49ers and the Rams tied a 5-2 in the NFC. Good football club. Yeah, I want to congratulate, uh, congratulate Ray Worsing. Ray's always been one of the more consistent field goals kickers in the league. He hasn't had a real long leg, even though he had a 52-yarder yesterday. Funny thing is, I watched that game, and you were sort of hoping they wouldn't score on that last drive. You were hoping Ray would get a shot at that seventh field goal. Right now, the Redskins back to live action. First down and 10, 43-yard line of Green Bay. Theismann trying to get points on the scoreboard. Nifty move by Theismann, but he'll have to settle at the 47-yard line for a loss of five as John Anderson was there defensively for Green Bay. That was kind of a strange call almost in a way. It was, uh, appeared to be a rollout designed to get somebody coming across, but those kind of plays take an awful lot of time. Deisman, I know, would like to get three points. He has one timeout remaining, and he's saving that. And he will try something, I do believe, down the middle. Green Bay protecting the outside and try and get it in field goal range for Mark Mosley. Uh-oh. Under throw, Joe Washington. It'll bring up a third down and close to 15 with 49 seconds on the clock and the Redskins with one timeout. I was looking down the middle, Frank, and he did, he had Gia Quinto open down the middle, and he seemed to have his mind made up to go out to that right flat in Washington and just bounced it out there. Second bounces don't count. Well, Joe Theismann has an excellent arm, but he doesn't have the Howard, sir, that the Bradshaws and the people have had in this league. And it's pretty tough to throw that deep out like that if you can't step up in the pocket. So you have to give credit to the Green Bay defense. They are really putting a lot of pressure up in the middle and keeping Theismann from stepping up throwing the ball. They need it somewhere down around the 30-yard line for Mosley. Third and long. Theismann gets it into the tight end, Don Warren. Down close to the 30-yard line, and the seconds continue to tick away. Theismann would like to throw one more pass and kill the clock, and he'll have time to do it. First down and 10 Redskins. Ezra Johnson gave him a good lick that time. Way over his head. And that stops the clock with 26 seconds, and the Redskins will have a second down and 10, one timeout remaining. They're near Green Bay's 30-yard line. But well, we have some tough officials here. They're booing that, saying he threw the ball away. And it wasn't that bad of a, you know, throwaway. Wasn't that obvious? 
But everybody knew that's what he was doing, Do right? It, yeah. yeah. It's one of those, they throw it away. I'll tell you something, Joe Theismann really is the heart and soul of this football team, in my estimation. He is a spunky little guy. He'll chew the fat with you. I've said that many times. He'll talk your ear off, but he gets things done out there. He steps in that huddle, you know who's running the show. Second and ten. Down to Charlie Brown. And Charlie Brown will have another Redskin first down. He's down inside the 12 yard line. That's definitely in field goal range. They're going to try and kill the clock. Joe would like one shot at the end zone. He's got one timeout remaining. Yep, he just threw it away to kill the clock. Stops the clock five seconds, and now I think they'll have to come with the field goal unit. Well, now you wonder why he didn't go ahead and just use his timeout if they were going to. Well, they had a little problem. Charlie Brown seemed to be hurt. He hobbled out to his position on the left end there, and he's hobbling off the field right now. He is limping. Charlie Brown goes off right there. He didn't want, want to stop the clock, so pretty gutsy move. He went back into position, allowed Theismann to stop the clock. And here's Mark Mosley, 28-yard attempt. He's been good at 12 or 15 this season. Let's keep out number 81 on Green Bay. He's been... Well, he didn't even go he didn't after jump that yeah. time. Right? Mosley splits the uprights. <laughs> Two seconds remain on the clock. And the Packers and the Redskins are playing a beauty here in Green Bay. 24 20. The Packers over the Redskins. Two seconds points. remaining in the half. It's interesting. We points. saw uh, Gary Lewis, who's blocked a record amount of field goals, at least in a minimal amount of time here recently. We saw him get literally tagged. Uh, earlier in the game when he was trying to block a field goal and I was a little surprised that play that he didn't go after it. I didn't see him in there either and you're right he's blocked uh, 12 kicks either conversions or field goals in the last 12 games just by leaping up in the middle of that line and using a tremendous vertical yeah. leap and speaking of the tight end Gary Lewis of Green Bay he was not in on that play. I'll tell you, I don't know if they keep going at this pace in the second half. <laughs> sure, I hope they can. Well, one thing we know, the Redskins have done it in the past. They've come back against the Raiders, and we know they'll be there for 60 minutes. That was Jeff Hayes drilling it along the ground, and here comes Harlan Huckleby. He expires the final two seconds here in the first half. Didn't hurt his stats any. <laughs> well, that's a stat move. <laughs> Crowd loves it. We hope you love it. Washington 20, Green Bay 24. The Redskins and the Green Bay Packers once met for the NFL Championship back in 1936. They don't meet that often, but they're really going after each other tonight. Green Bay at halftime, 24 to 20 over the 5 and 1 Washington Redskins. Of course, action throughout the NFL yesterday, and we'll be returning with the highlights of that play in a moment. The Miami Dolphins unveiled a new quarterback to the New York Jets at Shea Stadium yesterday, and that quarterback could be the future for the Dolphins. Dan Marino, the Pittsburgh Panther record setter for the past four years, made his second start of the season a smash hit on Broadway as he fired the Dolphins back into the AFC's Eastern Division race with first quarter shots like this to Nat Moore. Moore, a pro bowler from a few years back, made it look easy. 66 yards for the touchdown as Miami took an early 7-0 lead. The Jets tied it at 7 in the second quarter. As we pick up the action, Richard Todd was to have a long day. Back looking for a receiver. Big Doug Betters gets a hand on it. It's deflected into the arms of Kim Bocamper. 24 yards, another Miami touchdown. Miami missed the conversion, but they led 13 to 7. And there were seconds remaining in the first half. Dan Marino once again from the shotgun. This time looking for the big tight end, Joe Rose. And number 80 is there. 24-yard touchdown. Miami led at the half 20 to 7. They went on to win 32 to 14. The Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan is where the Bears and the Lions got it on yesterday. Picking up the action in the first quarter. No score. Eric Kippel at quarterback for Detroit. Out of the shotgun, looking for number 39, Leonard Thompson. And the speedy wide receiver is there at midfield. A 48-yard reception. Down he goes, and watch this. A 15-yard personal foul. That set up Detroit's first score. Second quarter action. Detroit leading 7-0. It's simple again. Looking for Dexter Bussey. Bussey. 
collects the ball and moves into the end zone for 14 yards out. Detroit on top, 14 to nothing. But with 12 seconds left in the half, Vince Evans brought the Bears back. Evans back, looking for the former Stanford star, Ken Marjoram in the end zone. Marjoram with a diving catch, brings the Bears close, 17-10, Detroit at the half. Then in the third quarter, 17-10, Detroit leading. Gary Danielson in relief of a shaken Eric Kippel, looking for Ulysses Norris. The ball is there, Norris is there, 20-yard touchdown, and Detroit leads 24-10. Later in the fourth quarter, 24-17, Detroit leading. Eric Kippel sets up for an apparent field goal. Eddie Murray kicks through. But Hipple has the ball. He looks for a receiver. He's not there, so he moves in on his own from eight yards out. The final score, Detroit 31, Chicago 17. And the Lions, with Billy Sims back in the lineup, could be tough to handle in the second half of the NFL season. Six times the Dallas Cowboys have come from behind this season to win. And yesterday with the Eagles in town, they came from behind once again. But the story was much different as Danny White enjoyed great protection and a great afternoon. Picking up the action in the first quarter. Dallas on top, three to nothing. But Ron Jaworski is back. And he's looking for his gifted wide receiver. Number 82, Mike Quick. Quick out sprints to Dallas secondary. 83 yards, touchdown. And the Eagles are on top, seven to three. But in the second quarter, Dallas took control. Danny White from the shotgun. Look at that protection. Looking for the tight end, Doug Cosby, number 84. Cosby, 14-yard touchdown. And Cosby gets better with each outing. Dallas on top, 17 to seven. Then in the third quarter, Dallas leading 23 to seven. Danny White pitches out to number 33, Tony Dorsett. Tony Dorsett goes 32 yards. And no one does it like Dorsett. He didn't get his 100 on the day. He got 92, but Dallas won nevertheless. That set up another Dallas score. And again, it was Tony Dorsett. Tony Dorsett, the smallish one with the enormous strength, takes it in. Dallas leads 30 to 7. They went on to overwhelm Philadelphia 37 to 7 to remain the NFL's only undefeated team. They're 7 and 0. And we'll see them Sunday night, October 23rd, against the Los Angeles Raiders from Texas Stadium in Dallas. Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns, and it would be a long afternoon for the Brownies. No score, first quarter. Browns in possession. Brian Sight is back, looking for Bobby Jones. Deflected by Dwayne Woodruff, the cornerback is into the arms of Mike Merriweather, who returns the ball 24 yards to the Browns' eight-yard line, setting up the game's first score. Still in the first quarter, 10 to nothing Steelers. Brian Seif is back, looking for Dave Logan. This time, the ball is picked off by number 57, Mike Merriweather, who takes this one in 31 yards with a touchdown. And the Steelers were on top 17 to nothing. Before the day was over, the Steelers' new edition of the Iron Curtain would pick off Seif six times. Second quarter action, 20 to 3, the Steelers. Brian Sight back again. Gives the ball to number 30, Boy Screen. Boy Screen filling in for an injured Mike Pruitt. Goes 23 yards for the Browning touchdown. The second year man from Carson Newman trying to fill the big shoes of Mike Pruitt. That brought the Brownies close at 20 to 10. But still in the second quarter, Cliff Stout, who had a good day, back looking for number 85, Calvin Sweeney. And the veteran from USC takes it 40 yards for the touchdown to put the Steelers out in front 34 to 10. Now it's 37-17 in the fourth quarter. Brian Seif tries to get the ball to green. Robin Cole knocks it out of his hands. It's picked up by Greg Best. Best scampers 94 yards for the touchdown. This capped another big day for the Steelers' defense. They have scored five touchdowns in the last two games. The final score, Pittsburgh 44, Cleveland 17. Pittsburgh now leaves the Central Division of the AFC by one over the Browns. Tampa Stadium, Tampa, Florida, and John McKay's Bucks wonder after last week's loss to Dallas, how do we win in this league? First quarter action, three to nothing, St. Louis. Jack Thompson back for the Bucks. Play action. He looks for James Wilder. An 11-yard touchdown is 6-3 Tampa Bay as the conversion was missed. Then in the second quarter, it's tied at six. 25 seconds left in the half. Lomax is back. He looks for number 80, Doug Marsh. Touchdown is 13-6 St. Louis at halftime. Then in the third quarter, first possession of the second half. It's Lomax once again. Back, looking for number 81, Roy Green. The gifted receiver is there. Six-yard touchdown, 20-6. to six. St. Louis has the lead. They've been saying all along the cards are better than their record, and indeed they were yesterday. Neil Lomax back again, still in the third quarter. Play action. 
looking for Doug Marsh. 16-yard touchdown. The Cards go on to defeat Tampa Bay 34-27. to And we'll watch them next Monday night from St. Louis as they take on the New York Giants at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Curly Lambeau Field in Green Bay, and the partisan Green Bay fans have watched a terrific football game played not only offensively and defensively by their favorites, and we'll be returning for second half action in just a moment. It'll be a beauty in the Big Ten. Michigan undefeated their 4-0 in conference play, tied with Illinois. Terrific Big Ten matchup. It'll be coming away 12 o'clock Eastern Time Saturday here on ABC. The race for the Big Ten Championship. Watch it here on ABC. What a game we've had, and it began with Green Bay getting on the scoreboard when their offensive team hadn't even got on the field. This is Theismann in the early going, trying to get the screen pass out. He gets the screen pass out all right, but Mike Douglas is there, strips the receiver, Sprints into the end zone and Green Bay was out on top. And then it was John Riggins a short while later following a Washington drive uncharacteristic of John Riggins piling into the middle. He fumbles the football. There's a wild scramble for it. By the time they uncovered every football player that was sitting on top of it was Clint Didier the short yardage tied in and that tied it at seven. Then Jan there you see it right there. Didier getting in to come up with the football. Stenerud added a field goal to put Green Bay on top 10 to 7. Mosley answered, and then Lynn Dickey came back for a 36-yard touchdown to Paul Kaufman, who is absolutely terrorizing the secondary of the Washington Redskins. Then John Riggins capped another long Washington drive to make it 17-17. But then it was a combination once again, only this time. Lynn Dickey looks one way. Turns around and he spots Paul Kaufman once again and Paul Kaufman is giving Curtis Jordan who is trying to handle him single coverage fits tonight. And I'm sure that there has been much said in the locker room by Richie Pettibone. How are we going to cover those outside receivers Jefferson and Lofton and still cover Kaufman. Set to go Harlan Huckleby. Jeff Hayes hits it for Washington. And this one will get into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. They'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. And Green Bay will have the first possession here in the second half. We anticipate, of course, Lynn Dickey back out with Eddie Lee Ivory. And Lofton at one flank, Jefferson at the other, and Kaufman at the tight end. Let's take a look at the stats as they change from the first quarter to the halftime. Big ones at five yards, minus five yards rushing in Green Bay. They just couldn't do much of anything on the ground first quarter. Well, the way they were throwing it, I don't think it really means that yeah, much. Look how much they picked it up. See, at halftime, now they've got 18. <laughs> 18 yards rushing, 211 <laughs> passing, but Green Bay's on top, 24-20. First play from scrimmage here in the second half. And Dickey, let's don't fool around, let's throw it. And he fires, and it goes out to James Lofton. Lofton and down the sideline. Oh, wow. And he just about broke it off, but he gets the first down at the Redskins 40 yard line. And what an athlete. Was that and Mel Kaufman? Mel Kaufman again. We, he, they ran a reverse earlier. I thought Mel Kaufman saved the touchdown by not being sucked in with the double reverse. And on this play, he's a lot faster than I thought because he made an, did an excellent job of catching Lofton. Well, that was Vernon Dean that he beat the first time. And you see, James is going down. He couldn't quite, didn't have enough room to work. And here comes Kaufman. Hoffman timed out the angle perfectly on the much faster Lofton, but it's first down, Green Bay, near the 40-yard line of the Redskins. Didier in motion. He's got him. He has got Wide him. open. Oh, no! <laughs> and Cofton. Oh, no. Lofton, corner of the end zone, and if you're with us for the first offensive play of the game, James Lofton had been wide open and missed a sure touchdown pass. Well, he's wide open here, but he's trying to slow down because the ball is a little, I can't say underthrown. He should have caught the ball. Oh, we goodness. all agree with that. But he was trying to make an adjustment. He wished the ball would have been out a little further. The ball wasn't out for enough. He was trying to slow down and yeah. catch the ball at the same time. It was just unfortunate. But I, as I said in the first half, I got a feeling he's going to have a chance to make amends. I think what's happening, you saw single coverage by Vernon Dean. Ordinarily, they're doubling out on Lofton. I think they're trying to double up now on Kaufman, and that'll <laughs> leave Jefferson and Lofton with single coverage. If that's the case, we'll see that again then. Second down and 10. Screen, trying to get it set up. 
Here comes Jerry Ellis. And Kaufman again. Kaufman saved a big game again this time. He had two. Jerry had he had uh, he had two guys out in front of him. He saved a big gainer, but it's a six-yard pickup by Ellis. He knocked him out on one sideline. Now he's come back on the other side. The other sideline. Gary Ellis, who is a good receiver, Don touched on it earlier. 65 receptions he had in '81. So throw in Gary Ellis with the core of Kaufman, Jefferson, and Lofton. You've got some receivers on that field. Third down and five. They've marked it just outside the 35-yard line of Washington. Ricky back again. Lofton, easy first down. And <laughs> Tony Washington laying well off Lofton. And it, this time, Washington was in single coverage. Well, that's well they're trying Anthony Washington. As I said, we were wondering what Richie Pettibon would do in the second half. They have to make some adjustments. I thought they'd blitz more. They blitz once now. He's given Lofton a big cushion, and there's no way you can stop a guy like James Lofton by giving him that much cushion and covering him one-on-one, -on -one, really. Well, let's look at the defense again. I, it looks like right now they're going into... Uh... At the 24-yard line, Cut first and 10, and here comes Gary Ellis. Oh, yeah. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. He cut up right at the right time. He exploded right <laughs> up the middle of the field, and they got it all going right now. And while Green Bay not noted as a running team, if you throw the ball as well as they have been throwing it, the defensive line of Washington has to think pass rush, and it makes it much easier to run. More than that, the defensive linebackers have to think about getting back into those passing lanes, and I think that's the main reason that play was able to work so successfully. Green Bay comes out smoking here in the second half. Stenner root for the conversion. And didn't make them all bad. And Stenner caps the first rushing touchdown against the Redskins in five games. And Bart Starr has the pack up tonight. Let's look at it again. Let's take a look at it. Early in the game, we saw Okowitz really filling those lanes. You see him sort of falling back there. He's five yards off the ball before he's blocked. It's a beautiful cut by Gary, and he just turns on the afterburners. That's a classic look at cutting against the grain and watching the defensive players overrun it. Gary Ellis, touchdown Green Bay. We'll be back. Eddie Garcia to kick off. Mike Nelms is deep for Washington. Nelms from the 13-yard line. Ooh. And Nelms clotheslined out over the 25 near the 28-yard line. Yeah, they're playing some rock'em, sock'em football now. These guys are fired up. There you go, Gary. Gary Ellis, nifty running, has put the pack on the scoreboard first here in the second half, and there'll be more. You see him talking to John Jefferson and talking to Bart. He's so, he really does respect John Jefferson. He says he's the best team player he's ever been around. First down and 10, the Redskins, near their own 29-yard line. Charlie Brown in motion. Riggins, just a little hesitant. That hole was there, but Riggins still Negotiate seven out of it. It'll be second down and three. Seesaw game here in Green Bay. Green Bay opened the scoring. Washington came back, tied it up. Green Bay went out on top, and then Washington tied it up. And it's been that way throughout the night. Riggins once again on second and three. Up for the first down at the 40-yard line. Well, we said Green Bay was a physical football team, and it's normally about this time where that pounding, you know, pounding that line will start to pay off for them. So it's going to be interesting to see if the Packers can get their defense together. And all they want to do in this case is get the ball back to their offense because their offense know what to do with it tonight. This is the way Washington would like to play. Give it to Reagans, pound out the first downs, control the ball. Huh. Reagans again, a little short. Dipper pass and Riggins hammers for nine. I don't think he was looking for that one, Frank. He, he had to catch it. Yeah, he said, wait a minute, I'm just supposed to be a decoy here. All the other guys were closed, and you saw Joe take a little extra time and, and drill it right to John. He said, okay, I can catch too. I can do everything. I'd have to, have to do everything for this team. Yeah. Well, he looked to be a little tad shaken up. He's had a long halftime, and Green Bay came out and marched right down the field, and he may be a little cold right now. He's got to warm up a little bit. 
Well, you when you get older, you know, it takes a little more time to warm up. I wouldn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Errol Gibbs played for Don Coriel, coached for him, came to the Redskins from record-setting offense with the Chargers in 81. Again, play action, good oh, you got faking, so and a man is wide open as Don Warren, the tight end. There was nobody out there. Theismann again, sending Riggins to the left side and the entire Green Bay defense collapsing over there. And he hides that ball well. He puts it right into Riggins' stomach and then takes it out. Interesting, too, is they bring both the right guard and right tackle with him. So he's pulling everything out there, taking a chance that nobody's going to read the fact that he's got that ball. Well, I tell you what was interesting. The left guard and the left tackle went to the right, and the right guard and the right tackle went to the left. Did they run into each other? <laughs> no, they didn't. They were beautifully executed play. <laughs> First down, Washington. 22-yard line of Green Bay. The pack on top, 31-20. Riggins left side again, and this time he yeah. bounces off one Packer and picks up some yardage when he should have been stopped at the line of scrimmage. Well, once again, you see where that pounding is paying off for the Redskins. They totally controlled the line of scrimmage that time. Riggins had all day to pick what hole he wanted to go to, and when they came up to tackle him, they didn't wrap their arms around, and that's normally what happens uh, when you play against the, a team like the Redskins. They just wear you down, and late in the game, they start breaking tackles, and they control that offensive line, and you're going to see a little more of that before this game's over. Getting a little chilly here in Green Bay, as you might suspect, here in mid-October. It's expected to go down somewhere around 30 tonight. As Theismann looks over, a second down and five. That's Charlie Brown in motion. Play action again. The screen to Charlie Brown. And a good move by Charlie oh. Brown as he splits defenders and gets the first down close to the 10-yard line. Was that Anderson who made that tackle? Somebody made a good tackle coming on the outside. I couldn't see it. Looked like Anderson slipped out there. Brown, we saw limp off right before the halftime. He's limping a little bit coming back right now. We also saw him use that same play earlier in the first half. It's awfully nice. You know, if you get both his wheels healthy and get him that ball out there, old downtown Charlie can certainly take you there. Right now, first down, goal to go. Seesaw battle. The Redskins coming right back. The Packers came out, scored first possession. And now... The Redskins have a first and goal to go. That's Rick Walker that lined up in the fullback position. Now he's moved up into that slot. Riggins, left side, hesitates, looks for the opening. Doesn't find much, gets a couple. Down he, close to the seven. He who hesitates is lost. It was written about a fullback. He does it awfully well. and He doesn't do it as nifty as Franco Harris does, but he's doing the same thing. When you saw Jay looks and he pecks and he accelerates a lot faster than he looks he's a big man yeah, he picks his way and uh, what allows you to do that is a good strong offensive line you know a lot of backs they get the ball Earl Campbell right now Walter Payton right now the minute they get the ball they're running from people now these guys aren't they got a good offensive line and they have the time back there to pick and choose where they want to run they've marked it at the eight yard line so it's second down goal to go well, that's a real good point I never thought about that okay that's good Riggins on the right side and Anderson finally collars him, but he's inside the five-yard line where it'll be third down, goal to go, and Theismann will be in the passing situation. Now, that's an amazing thing about Riggins. A guy who weighs 235 or more pounds, he got three or four yards out of that from speed and speed alone. He was able to outrun the pursuit and turn up and get three yards where most big fullbacks that weight would have never got that far. I'll tell you, Bart has to be proud. And his defensive coordinator has to be proud John Meyer of this defensive effort the Packers are last place in the NFL defensively and they have really battled these Redskins they're down goal to go Redskins four of seven on conversions flags are down and Doe Theismann moves up that was Don Warren well normally if it's in a and his offensive interference. Boy, I didn't see that. Been a pick. I think it was a pick deeper in the end zone, maybe. We're seeing a lot more the of those picks. Number 85. I think it was a, we'll take a look, I'm sure. So the Redskins a will be backed one. up. Watch the upper right-hand corner, and you might be able to pick up Don Warren. He was the guilty Redskin. There you go. We're working off John Anderson, pushing away. And, of course, he was open. Well, it wasn't a pick. I guess they said he ran right into his man, pushed off to get open. 
So now Theismann has a third down, goal to go. But the ball is back at the 14-yard line. That changes things considerably. Charlie Brown, the wide receiver to the right. Hartmont goes to the left. And Giaquinto is in the slot. That was a messed up some way. Theismann. And Giaquinto, apparently the intended receiver, Theismann, just had to unload it, and we're going to see Mark Mosley. That was a messed up play. You could almost tell. You see Warren trying to wave to Giaquinto before that ball was snapped. You got to figure somebody missed the signals in there. Well, that was a big uh, penalty because even though they may get the field goal here, there's still two scores down. Yeah. So in a sense, this drive has not hurt the, the Green Bay Packers at all. And again, Don Warren, guilty of offensive interference. 31-yard attempt now, Mark Mosley. Oh, that was right through the middle. And he pops it through, and the Redskins have to settle for three. Good defense, and the penalty hurt. Packers 31, the Redskins 23. Harlan Huckleby is deep for Green Bay. Jeff Hayes setting it up. And we've got the pack on one of their good nights. They've been alternating all season. When they're bad, they're very bad. And when they're good, they're very good. And Jeff Hayes dribbles along the ground. Huckleby from the eight-yard line. And Huckleby will give quarterback Lynn Dickey good field position out around the 31-yard line. Well, Theismann, I think you're right, Don. Uh, he just was forced on that third and goal from the 14-yard line to throw that football away, and he wanted six, not three. Yeah, it didn't look like they had that one all in sync. Well, you can see him shaking his head there. He's a little upset with himself, but he's got a lot of time, and you can bet Joe Theismann will be back before this game's over. He'll make it interesting. He's firmly convinced he can beat anyone at any time, and he's made believers out of a lot of people who never thought so. On first down, Dickey again to the air. This is Phil Epps, the speedster, second-year man out of TCU, who, like Kaufman, can really get downfield in a hurry. Yeah, we saw a glimpse of him earlier on a return. You're talking about fast. This guy's had the fifth fastest 60-yard dash in history. In not the, the world. Sixth fast, not the fifth fastest last year. In, in, in history of mankind. In the universe. <laughs> in the galaxy. And that's a whole lot of time. <laughs> so if you ever have something to deliver 60 yards, call <laughs> Phil up. He lives he's from Atlanta, Texas. <laughs> Beats Federal Express. Second down to four. A gain of six by Epps. Ivory. And, oh, he is hammered over the right side. And nobody blocked over there. No wonder he got hammered. Those guys were back there before he got there. Tell you, Dexter Manley and Neil Okowitz were right there. Wanda Jefferson and daughter Tiffany. DeWanda. Remember the, her Wanda. the superstars, Don? Yep. I think Tiffany was down there, too. That's the little daughter. Well, you know, I'm a little surprised. They, their receivers had time to rest on that drive of the Redskins. If I was them, I'd throw the ball every down now. Third down, long six. Ivory loses a couple. Green Bay from the 35. Boom. Dickey. And he got out with his helmet intact as he was buried. Dexter Manley was there. Tony McGee. Mr. Sack for the Washington Redskins was also the man who forced Dickey into the sack. Good isolation on Manley there. You see him 72. He almost jumped off sides. Comes give a pretty nice, what they call a slap and jerk. Just fighting him off. That was all strength. He Actually, almost stripped the jersey of Swankey. <laughs> he did, didn't he? The worst thing that just happened on that drive is that it is getting late in the game. The Green Bay defense is maybe getting a little tired, and they would have wished the Green Bay offense would have got at least oh. That is blocked. Oh, Lucky Scribner's first punt is blocked, and the Redskins have it. Oh, Lucky Scribner's punt was blocked by number 48, Ken Coffey, coming from the outside. It was slow getting it away. And it could be that Bucky Scribner <laughs> on his first punt was a little chilly, just a little slow. And Coffee got it. Boy, he was there. I mean, it was not even it was not even close. He had it all the way. Let's see if we can pick it up. Comes in, he timed that snap just right. Left-footed kicker. Wow. The rush well, is from the right. Yeah, what he did, he went out and double team on the outside man. They thought they were gonna block and try to have a return, and he rushed instead. Real nice play on that. On part. first and ten, Joe Washington breaks back, runs right into the arms of Rich Wingo, but he gets a couple. Uh, that was really kind of one of the well we had an interception let Dickey through the interception we had a fumble that turned out to be a touchdown and there's Dexter Dexter 
you're just as pretty as you can be. <laughs> Isn't he? <laughs> if he asks you, I know uh, what you're well, telling. I'll tell you, he's as pretty as he can be. <laughs> They've got a second down and eight now for the Redskins. They had to settle for three before. They get the turnover. They get so many of them, and they're knocking once again. They're down, 31-23. Washington. Joe Washington looking for first down yardage. He doesn't get it at the 10-yard line, but he has a pickup of six. You see him, see him run out That's there. That's how he scoots. Well, but he does, but he looks like that, you know, he ought to be playing. Uh, we saw all these high school teams today driving around here in yeah. Green Bay playing. Joe looks like he'd be one of those guys. He doesn't look like he's not nearly as big as those guys out there. Well, you got to give him credit. I've, I've had one leg that it operated yeah. on, and I know how tough it was to work on. Where that. would you find that guy? Two of them. <laughs> Look at that. I'm hope I don't see him late tonight. <laughs> you saw him late last night. I did. He was eating fettuccine with <laughs> <Okay. time> sauce. <laughs> Third down one. Boom. Riggins, who better on third and one as Riggins gets the first down near the six yard line? John Riggins going over the left side, and they run so often to the left, and why not? Joe Jacoby at 300 pounds, Russ Graham, 275. They both work on the left side, and Riggins loves to run behind his hogs. I figured that one out. The last 20 times they've been inside the opponent's 20, they've scored. That would make sense. Yeah, I read that for you. Oh, First down, goal to go. Washington sprinting for the corner. And he didn't make and it. And he does not beat John Anderson. When and he, he might have got a half a yard out of it. It sure looked like he was going to score when he first went out there. Big Anderson. It's only about 35 right now. <laughs> what? 35 degrees. Yeah, huh? He's got a little anti antifreeze in him. Who are you guys talking about? Did I miss something? What was that? <laughs> well, yes, you did. Okay. We'll get to it later. Okay. Second down goal to go. Warren in motion and Theismann's back. Theismann. It's either a not Joe Washington right at the goal line, but the officials are not indicating touchdown. Well, it certainly appeared he was in the end zone when he caught the ball at pretty much the same play he caught to beat the Raiders. And I guess it is a touchdown. Touchdown, yeah. Yeah, they did give it to him. That's a play you just bring the back around there. Generally, he's got an option to turn in and out or out on the backer of the safety who's going to guard him, and he turned inside that time, and Theismann put it right on the numbers. And the Redskins get seven points out of the turnover. The block cut. Mark Mosley through the uprights. Getting closer. And we draw closer. 31. Packers, the Redskins, 30. Let's watch again. Now, Washington will be right on that goal line. We got a late call on it. I think he was in the end zone when he took it. Wingo is there defensively for the pack. Yep, he's in. Well, he's in there. Wingo and Anderson's kind of teamed up on him, but he was there. 5:25 remaining in the third quarter, and the action continues here in Green Bay. In Television presents You Make the Call. A long field goal attempt falls short and is fielded at the goal line by Zach Dixon of the Colts, who then tries to decide whether he can return the ball or not. Now, you make the call. Can Dixon return the ball? What call did you make? Although it almost never happens, it is legal to return any missed field goal, including this one. Harlan Huckleby deep for Green Bay. Jeff Hayes to kick off. Joe Theismann teams up with Joe Washington to draw the Redskins to within one. 5.25 remaining in the third quarter. This time Hayes gets it into the end zone. We'll get the touch back and Green Bay will begin from their 20 yard line. Let's watch this. Watch at the top of your screen and keep in mind the Scribner is a left footed kicker. That's Ken Coffey. Got a straight sprint. Scribner slow three steps. And he never even came close to getting it off. Yeah, well, he was particularly slow that time. I think that was purely his fault. That his first attempt of the night. That could have something to do with it. Yeah, it really could. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, only led to its touchdown. And this was a culmination of a 19-yard drive. Theismann drills it into Washington. Yes, he's in the end zone. Good angle. 
First down 10, live action, Green Bay. Dickey, let's don't fool around, let's throw it. Ooh. And a flag goes down. Yeah, we're going to get a holding call, I think, against Green Bay. And well, that's what really upsets you. You know, when you get a holding call after they've already trapped you, you go back to Hull and say, look, I don't mind you holding them, but hold them good. <laughs> that was Big Dave Butts pressuring Dickey. Charlie Brown has been limping pretty much since the first quarter. Appears to be that old ankle they're trying to tape up there. You can do it. Go downtown, Charlie. Larry what? McCarron was holding for Green Bay. Washington declines the penalty. They had Dickey down at the 14-yard line, a loss of six. So it'll be second down and 16. Washington wants the football back. They don't want to give Dickey any more time to throw it. And then they won't buck you to punt again. I'm telling Dickey you, and his butts once again. Oh, man. Well, I tell you, that's two plays in a row they got to him. It was a great, great on their defensive lineman because... The receivers are both wide open. The loss now back to the seven-yard line. Third down, 23. Phil Epps, James Lofton, John Jefferson, wide receivers. And you better believe that front four will turn it loose. And we come with the trap play up the middle. Gary Ellis. Ellis gets breathing room for Bucky Scribner, the punter, out to the 23-yard line. Well, what I was trying to say at the last time they were about to punt, the big problem here is that the offense of the Green Bay Packers haven't given their defense time to rest. The Redskins are a powerful team. They've been wearing them down, and it's been three plays and out the last two times Green Bay's had the ball. Here's a man that can hurt you, Mike Nelms, Pro Bowler. Three last, well, he came in 81. He's been the Pro Bowl return man the last three seasons, averaging a little over 10-8 thus far this season. And Bucky Scribner will hurry this a little bit. Good kick. It takes Nelms back to the 35-yard line. That Nelms goes for it, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Nelms hurtling out over the 45-yard line, and Joe Theismann will have good field position for his Redskins offense. 32-yard punt by Scribner. Seven-yard return by Nelms. 347 remaining in the third quarter. The pack is ahead by one. First down, 10 Redskins. Good field position. Their own 46-yard line. Joe Washington. Yeah, look at Joe. Good blocking in Washington. Gets eight down close to the 45-yard line of Green Bay. And Washington totally blew the Green Bay left side of their defense off the ball that time. As I said, these guys are, they average close to 280 pounds up front, and they just wear you down. And it's beginning to tell on Green Bay. And adjustments defensively, although not effective in the early moments of the second half, have seemingly slowed the Green Bay offense. Second and two, play action by Theismann, hides the ball well. Fires and it's incomplete. <laughs> Gets it in to the tight end, Don Warren, and there's yardage for the first down at the 35-yard line of Green Bay. We call that a classic case of catching the ball before you run. That's right. I bet you catch it and you don't run. That's right. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, the ball was a little low, it was a little inside, but Don made a good move. He just slid in there. Heisman hides that ball well, doesn't he? He does. He's good. But well, you know, it really is. They've got a good offense to run play action type passes, and he does execute those very well. That's a kind of a new look. Two big wide receivers split right. So I think I'll just run that way. Washington. Washington. Ooh. Good move to the outside. <laughs> and wisely stepping out of bounds with the first down at the 16-yard line. <laughs> he said, I've gone about as far as I can go. Johnny Gray was coming in there to close in on it. Look at him, a little counter move there. Franco Harris runs that quite a bit. Dips inside. He's got great blocking up front so he can pick his way around. Don't like it in there. Let me get out there. And Oh, well, I'll see you a little later. There's a good block by Art Muck that time, number 81, that came in there and closed him off so he could dip outside. Joe Washington has the Redskins at the 16-yard line. 2.22 remaining in the third quarter. Redskins trailing by one. Washington again. They found a working area on the right side as Washington adds more yardage. He'll pick up five. It'll be second and five. Well, they've definitely found something they like over there. They're running the same play over there time after time, and each time they're just blowing the Packer left side of their defense right off the ball. 
Charlie Brown's limping again. You saw him up there right next to Joe Jacoby. I'm surprised 66. they didn't attack that left side, though, defensively of Green Bay much earlier. They worked mostly to the left side with Riggins. They like to. But, but again, on that left side of the Green Bay line, Mike Butler is not there. Byron Bragg's trying to fill in. At nose tackle, the man who always you always count on for pursuit. They're down to their third one, Charlie Johnson. He's in there tonight. Rich Turner's gone. After last week, Terry Jones is out of there. So that's where the pack is weak against the run on their left side. Washington. Well, we had mentioned earlier that if they ran to their left side is what Washington prefer to do. They're running into the strength of the Green Bay defense, and we saw a little of that on this play right here. Washington got inside the 10, short of the first down. It'll be third down and about three. It's like Russ Grimm's limping again. We saw him limp a little earlier in the ball game. Grimm, the offensive left guard for the Redskins. Third and three, and one would suspect that Theismann will be in the passing situation. He brings in Gia Quinto to join Joe Washington. Both good receivers out of the backfield. Trap oh. and Mike Douglas read it all the way. Oh, and did he hit Joe Washington? And the Redskins look like they're going to have to settle for three once again. Well, that was the, let's take a look at this. It's, a, it's apparent that Douglas's key is on Washington, the bat. And the minute he stepped across, he just blew in there. And you can't play linebacker any better than that. He didn't miss yeah, the key, did he? He did not. <laughs> Mark Mosley. Theismann. He doesn't always put it down. This will be a 28-yard attempt by Mosley. And Mosley is good once again. And now the Redskins have taken the lead. They lead the Packers 33-31. Ten seconds remain in the third quarter. The five and one Redskins trying to stay within one of the Dallas Cowboys in their division while the Green Bay Packers are three and three. They need a victory tonight to stay within shot of the Minnesota Vikings. Hayes hits it. We got to look at Huckleby and he settles in at the five yard line. Look out. Harlan Huckleby. Huckleby inside the 40 yard line of the Redskins. Brian Carpenter made the save for the Redskins. That's Huckleby's longest return of his career, 56 yards. Well, Green Bay needed something. They needed somebody to get him going, and Harlan Huckabee, who came from Michigan, he was a super back for them. I thought we would have heard more about him since he's been a pro, but tonight he's really doing a good job on these returns, and he did a super job of picking his way through there. I thought at one point he was going to run away with it right here. Good running by Harlan Huckleby, and... Green Bay comes roaring right back. They trail at the end of three quarters, 33-31. We'll return for fourth quarter action. Here in the second half, the Redskins have really put the pressure on Lynn Dickey. In the first half, not much pressure, and he hung up some big numbers. Most of that yardage you see right there. And now he has good field position at the Redskins' 40-yard line. First down and 10 Green Bay as we start the fourth quarter. And again on first down. Got him. Wide open. Down the sidelines, Gary Ellis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's out of bounds at the seven yard line. It'll be first down, goal to go. Mark Murphy made the saving tackle. It's amazing how easy you can make it look when you have the time to throw. That was a well executed play all the way around. A little play action. You'll see him come out of the backfield, Ellis. A little quick fake to Eddie Lee up in the middle. He's got him one to one on the outside. They cleared it out. Trying to cover with the linebacker, Mel Kaufman, it'll never work against a speedy back like Ellis. But what do you do? You have to double cover Lofton. You have to show double coverage on Jefferson occasionally. First down, goal to go. Roll for Dickey. Eddie Lee Ivory tried to get it in. Good defensive effort. Over on the left side, it was Mel Kaufman. It'll be second down, goal to go. Well, if they've done anything defensively, they have seem to be able to take Paul Kaufman away from Green Bay. In the last two drives, Green Bay's receivers were open. Unfortunately, Dickey didn't have the time to throw the ball. Dickey, 17 of 23, 260 yards. Second down, goal to go. Remember, the Redskins have the number one defense in the NFL against a rush. 
So one could expect Dickey maybe play action and firing the ball. A reverse. A walk in by the tight end Gary Lewis. A beautiful call. Whoa. Absolutely beautiful call. Yeah, wasn't it, Bertie? We saw Gary Lewis come with that reverse against the Giants, Don. Remember? Yeah. And he was taken trying to get into the end zone. This time it works for Green Bay. And they are back out on top. Well, a lot of folks, I guess we might as well go ahead and tell everybody, but the coaches had a meeting a little while ago and they decided the first team to 50 wins. <laughs> And it looks like they might yeah. both make it. Yeah, first team 50 <laughs> wins, so you got to get in and hustle with them. Stenerud is on. Come on, Yon. Zip. That's and 71 points. The <laughs> Packers draw out in front again, 38-33. Uh, that drive set up by a fine return of 56 yards on the kickoff by Harlan Huckleby. Let's take a look at Gary Lewis lining up in a double tight end type situation, and it's it's a simple reverse. Curtis Jordan again comes up a little short. Bless his heart. He's been <laughs> close to all the guys that scored all night. And the day of television, you Whoa, know what I mean? Wow. Picked up too often, close to the man who scores. Gary Ellis puts the Packers back out on top. We'll be back. They are as one on their feet. And they have something to cheer about tonight, last week. A pitiful effort against Detroit. Detroit beating the pack 38-14. They have roared back now and challenging the Redskins. They have the lead, 38-33. Mike Nelms brings it out for Washington. And a good return out to the 30-yard line. And Washington's offensive unit comes onto the field. Well, I bet this is the Packer team my old coach, John McKay, saw a few weeks ago. <laughs> that sounds like the same one to me. They cut off to a roaring start. Yeah, 49 points in the first half. <laughs> take a look at the numbers now. We'll take a look at the halftime stats and then we'll dissolve that over to what transpired in the third quarter. Washington adding more yardage but Green Bay coming back. Washington's time of possession 28 minutes to 16. First down 10 Washington live action. The screen. Art Monk. Good defensive effort. Mike McCoy there for the pack. Well, that play didn't fool anyone. They were lucky to get five yards out of it. But they did get five, and it's a pretty good offensive play, I think. After the Packers are all fired up, and you got these fans behind them, throw something that you know is go you're going to complete. Maybe you pick up something. They picked up five, could have picked up some more. They have actually marked it at the 33s. Get them four. It'll be second down and six. Bill Washington seeing a lot of action here in the second half. That's the single setback, and here comes Bill Washington. And Washington looking for the first down. He's very close. He needed to get to the 40. He got a good block by Russ Grimm, the big left guard, pulling in front of the play. He just buried the defensive linebacker for the Packers on the left side. Well, that's the same sort of counter misdirection play they ran two or three times on the last drive. I was surprised they stopped running it. It hasn't been stopped yet. Green Bay haven't stopped it yet. And if I was them, I'd just keep running until they do something to stop it. See, one little stutter step there to one side to get the linebackers to move so your blockers can get position on the defense. And it's just a matter of running a, a sweep. Third down, less than a yard. Riggins. They call on Big John. He gets the first down. Out over the 42, close to the 43. First down, Washington. A lot of points on that board. 38-33, the most we've ever had on Monday night back in 1982, which wasn't back that far, was it? Well, it was Cincinnati and San Diego, and they really got it on. They racked up 84 points. Well, we have plenty of time to surpass that tonight. Fourth quarter action. The Packers lead the Redskins 38-33. First down, Washington. Theismann. Monk is there. And oh, Monk yeah. will have the first down near the 30-yard line of Green Bay, right in the arms of Mark Lee. That was a well-thrown ball. Joe had a little, little pressure coming in there. Little. <laughs> Joe little pressure. He was coming. Look at Art coming up, holding his elbow. Let's take a look at it here. Art Monk at the bottom. 
Downtown Charlie Brown up at the top and Joe right in the middle there. I think Eisman just reading the free safety, finding the man who had individual coverage, and in this case, it was Art Monk. Uh, you saw a little bit of a blitz that came in there. It really wasn't that effective. That's George Cumbie, number 52, that came in, but it flipped on down and Monk got it. Five action, first and ten. Go Washington. Another opening on the right side, and Washington, a very intelligent runner, using his blockers, gets the first down, down around the 20. Well, we felt we'd see a little more Joe Washington this half. They're running that simple counter play, and, and Green Bay has done nothing to adjust to it, to stop it, or to even slow it down. An injured Packer now is down. That is George Cumbie, who has played himself some football game tonight. And right now, the trainers are on the field looking at George. We'll be back. George Cumbie came off the field unassisted. He looks like he's ready to go back in. They're going to hold him out for one play. They have Mike Curcio, a free agent, that was picked up after he was released by the Eagles this year. He is in there, number 57, replacing a very tough George Cumby. First down and 10, the Redskins, 20-yard line of the pack. Well, Joe Washington. the other way. And Washington oh. almost breaks off a big one, but he's tripped up. It was Byron Braggs who collected Joe Washington as he tried to come back around on the right side. A gain of a couple, it'll be second down and eight. Well, it's the same play they've been running. They did a little counter and went the other way with it. Second down, long eight. Beisman with a good move and then a good shot. You bet. Fires it in to Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown down somewhere around the two-yard line, but I'll tell you, Charlie Brown had hooked up. Don, you saw it, and then Joe Theismann just directed the traffic. He said, run the slant. That's really having composure, I guess, is a good word for that, because he really was trying to go to the other side, Frank. You're right. And he came back and saw Charlie over his hookup. Says, move, Charles. Move. Well, Charlie did a great thing because he wanted to go to Charlie on the hook, but George Cumbie was coming over so fast, and they made a, both guys made a super adjustment on it. First down, goal to go. The Redskins roaring right back. Looking to take the lead once again in a seesaw battle. You think Riggins is going to get it? <laughs> you got to scoop if he doesn't. <laughs> Riggins pulling into the end zone. You know he's going to get it, and they still can't stop you. You know they got a pretty good horse, right? The guy they have to stop is Joe Jacoby and Russ Grimm on the left side. They just, like I said earlier, they look like housing projects. Yeah, you're looking at about 380 pounds there. Actually, 480 pounds. That's Grimm turning inside, and he puts the screen block on Cumbie, and Riggins just surges in for the touchdown, and Mark Mosley adds the extra point, and the Redskins take the lead once again, 40-38. First team to 50 wins. <laughs> and we're getting close here in Green Bay with 9.57 remaining in the game. <laughs> The jockocracy, Frank Gifford, O.J. Simpson, Don Meredith, and we like this kind of football. It is yeah, really my fun. kind of ball. Yeah, Charlie Brown's been limping a little bit. Best we can figure out, it's either an ankle or foot of some sort because they keep going over there. We don't really have any information from it as the kickoff goes in the air. Hayes hits it. This is Huckleby. Bobbles it. Gets it back on the first dribble and turns it into something out over the 30-yard line for good field position for quarterback Lynn Dickey. This is the one where Theismann kind of directs the traffic, set up that he was first down to, goal to go. Yeah, he's really going to the right. You see him make his little moves. Says, hey, come on, Charles, move. And he did. Charlie Brown almost made it in there. Maybe it looked like he fell. Could have been that sore ankle that, or a foot or whatever it is that's bothered him a little bit. Green Bay brings it up. Lofton split to the right. Jefferson to the left. Dickey looks over a first and 10 at his own 32. Play action by Dickey. Jefferson wide open. He'll have the first down. He's inside Redskin territory near the 49. Oh, we got some offense tonight, have we? 18 yard pickup. JJ, I think, was a little surprised he wasn't hit. I think he thought yeah. the guy was right there on him. Made his catch and braced for the hit that didn't come. Did a little hitch. A little hitch in his get along. That'll Is do that it. it. Hitch and you get along. We'll do it. <laughs> Catching on, man. You are, you are, I hang around with you. You are sharp. 
Packers again, first down, just inside Washington territory. Dickey looks downfield, checks off to Mike Mead, and Mike Mead will get five yards to the 45-yard line, but Dickey wanted to go deep. The man was not open. Mel Kaufman defensively again. Mead did a good job of catching that ball. It was sort of low, and he was running away from it. Reached back. Evidently has some excellent hands. There's Dale Washington having a little wardrobe fix over there in the sidelines. Second down, long five, Lofton split to the right, trying to pick up the automatics by Dickey, and he's screaming them out. Good call, and a great catch that by Kopp. Lofton gets the ball inside the 30-yard line of Washington, and that one, credit Dickey, because he knew he would get single coverage on Lofton, call for that little zig out, and Lofton ran it beautifully. You're looking at two of the greatest receivers that come into this game in a lot of years. 1978, they came in the league with another guy named Wes Chandler. Yes, so either one of them were open, looked like, didn't it? Lofton with a tremendous move on Darrell Green for the first down at the 28-yard line. Meade. Meade is tripped up. Good play again by Mel Kaufman, who's playing a football game tonight. A loss of about three yards on that. It'll be second down 13, and every time that I can recall, on second and real long yardage, Washington has come with the blitz. <laughs> and they have used mostly a safety blitz in this situation. That marriage is certainly going to work. Yeah, we saw a good a young married couple today at the hotel. That's right. It's yeah. nice. Been it's been nice. Everybody's getting married. Dickey with a quick count. Not everybody. And good defensive play. It was Kaufman and Rich Mallott got back there to deflect it. We hear a boo there. I guess they figured it was pass interference. And a field goal would put the Packers back in the lead. But one would suspect they need a few more yards to make certain for Jan Stenerud. Third down, 13. Lofton right. Phil Epps has joined the wide receivers, Lofton and John Jefferson. Dickey, wide open. Down the sidelines. Oh, oh yeah. Mike Beautiful Mead. move. And a great call by Bob Schnauker. He put all three wide receivers deep. He sent Mike Mead into the flat, beat the linebacker, touchdown, Green Bay. What a football game. Uh, Looked Dick like Nehemiah going in the end zone, <laughs> hurtling over the guy. He huh? did. And Dickey <laughs> loved it. Did you see that expression on his face, a little <laughs> wink in his eye? Hey, he said, we got him again. End zone replay here. You Dickey's see a Mead? good actor, too. Look at him look deep. Throws to his man running a little out pattern on a backer. I tell you, it was right in there too, wasn't it? And here's Nehemiah the right here. Nehemiah all right. Nehemiah was a bullfrog. <laughs> now Stenerud can break the all-time Monday night mark for point score. We have 84 thus far scored. We now have 85. That's the highest we've ever had on the Monday night series. With 723 remaining. <laughs> all right. I love it. And Dickey now 21 of 28, 330 yards, and we still have time to go. <laughs> Do they love it in Green Bay? Oh, yeah. And the pack has been on the go tonight. Eddie Garcia to kick off. Mike Nelms is deep for Washington. The Packers on top, 45-40. Isn't that amazing? 45 <laughs> 40. First team to 50. <laughs> well, we're going to see if you're right. Now, from the nine yard line. And this time, Nelms is held at the 26 yard line. Hustling down there, Tim Lewis, the number one draft pick of the Green Bay Packers, the rookie from Pittsburgh. And let's go back a moment ago. Phil Epps was in there along with Jefferson and Lofton. They all went deep. 
Dickey took a long, deep, mean circle out of the backfield, broke it off to the left, and he was wide open. That was right on the money, too, though. Good pass. <laughs> you like that, didn't you? Yeah, I like that. You like it. Like that. <laughs> and here comes Washington. If you recall the Raider game earlier this year, you know that they'll stay in there. They don't lose their poise. What? And Art Monk just overthrown by Joe Theismann. One of the few passes that he really he has missed tonight. He's been on the money pretty most uh, pretty much. Let's see. Spit it out. Come All on. Right. He's right. been on the uh, money Wershing, most whoa, of the time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There you uh, go. Ray, whoa, whoa, whoa. Ray Worshing. You've already done that. <laughs> yeah, I, that was my problem. Okay. 707 <laughs> remaining. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a pinball machine. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> Second down and ten. Don Warren, the tight end, adjusts. That's Dia Quinto, number 30, in motion. Theismann has Monk, and he's open at midfield. It'll be first down, Washington, at their own 49-yard line. Well, Gia Quinto did a little funny motion. He did an about face and went the other way. And I think Murphy was supposed to go all the way with him. He got a little confused, and he found himself on a man. Take a look at Muck. Now, he just came back a couple of weeks ago. He had been out with a bad knee. His timing could be off just a little, but he goes up, comes down with it, and gets the first down. Great football player out of Syracuse where he had tremendous... Marks as a running back as well as a wide receiver, Art Monk. First and ten, Washington. Nobody home there. Nobody. There, he got it. And Washington ran into some Packers on the left, brought it back to the right, and picks up six yards when it looked like he was going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Well, they were trying to run that little counter they've been running all day, and it appears that the Green Bay Packers on the sideline got together and said, hey, Made a little adjustment to stop that. As you can see, he'll take that step to his right. He's going to his left. And they made a nice little adjustment to stop that play. But Joe Washington, being the fine runner he is, made an adjustment himself. That's right. Second down and four. Washington again. And again an opening. And Washington will have a first down inside the 40-yard line of Green Bay. And a game that has been remarkably free of penalties. And it almost seems as if the team that has the ball last is going to win. They're using, we mentioned earlier, they've got really two basic philosophies of offense, and they're kind of dictated by the running back they have in there. They have Joe Washington now. A little bit more of those kind of float a little bit, and let's see if we can find an opening where Riggins, they just try to run over you. Yeah, I think they use Riggins more when they're sitting on a lead and to control the ball, and when they have to score, they That's seem to go with Washington. That's probably more. right, yeah. No First works. down and 10, Washington. A little more explosive. Play action, Theismann. Heisman will be sacked. Credit that to the defensive secondary of the Green Bay Packers. Byron Braggs reigns all over Theisman. There will be a loss of seven and good coverage downfield. You're right on, O.J. Theisman had no place to put it. That's worked very well so most of the time tonight where he does that little rollout, comes out, sets up, creates a new pocket for him. But this way they just didn't seem to find the open, open man. There you had Johnny Gray. He was covering Mark. You had Mark Lee. He is all over Charlie Brown. Now it's second down, 16 for Theismann. He doesn't like what's going uh -huh. on defensively, either that or his personnel, and he uses a timeout. The Redskins have two remaining, 4.32 remaining in the game. This game more and more becomes like a game of chess. Every given situation demands different personnel. Well, you remember O.J. had 19 players playing defense for <laughs> Pittsburgh last week, and it must have worked because they scored all the points. They must have had 24 playing yesterday. I mean, you Cleveland. got playing that, O.J. You got to have at least. Well, they got it just about everybody playing. <laughs> Look at Joe. Isn't he cute? Is Look that terrific? Joe. Interesting story. He came out. I think he thought he was going to be drafted a lot higher. He was a fourth-round draft pick of Miami, and so he went up to Toronto, had himself a couple of good years up there, and then. George Allen, like, like Joe, really, when he was at Notre Dame, and he gave a first-round draft pick to Miami in 76 to, uh, rather, in, he gave it in 74, but it was a 76 first-round pick to get Theismann. And he is 
turned into everything that George Allen thought he would. He seemed to be very inexpensive. <laughs> One no, draft no. choice to get him was a very inexpensive car. Well, I'm not going to turn him out, I guarantee. I might not turn this one out until it's all over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In November the 27th, 1966, there were 113 points scored. By whom? 70. 72 by Washington and figure out the rest of it. They were playing the Giants. 41. Oh, juice of math is in You have got it. <laughs> Guys went back on second down and 16. Got a man going deep. Giaquinto. Oh, oh, he makes a great catch. Was that That's nice? That's two tonight for Giaquinto. Right oh. down the sideline. The same play. We talked about him earlier. He is a tremendous receiver. Don Shula found that out when he was with Miami, and Washington uses him well. Good he ran this play earlier in the game where he just swung out of the backfield and went down the sideline. He, he evidently is a lot faster than I thought he was. <laughs> I don't know whether he sure caught a good ball that time, didn't he? <laughs> this is all. Let's look at it from the reverse angle. Good throw by Joe. But this ball, Gio Quinto just goes right out on the fingertips. Oh. Nice catch, fella. Hey, what he did, he didn't jump for it. He kept running, and that's a smart receiver. You'll cover a lot more ground if you keep your feet on the ground than you will leaping in the air. What is the disease that one basketball player mentioned? <laughs> First down, 10, the ball at the 11-yard line. Joe Washington looks for the end zone, but takes it out of bounds at the five-yard line. This is a crazy game. Yeah. <laughs> this is a crazy one. I love it. That's the time remaining. They'll have a hard time tying it because it's 45-40. That's what Johnson's limping out there. You don't want him hurt because he's one of the big cogs over there in that. And there's a Redskin down also, Doc. <laughs> over the far side of the field. They don't want to get him hurt either. That's Rich Walker, the move tight end. He's being looked at there by the training staff of the Redskins. Three minutes and 34 seconds to go. 85 points on the board. And the Redskins are on the five or six yard line. We're going to have some action here tonight. You don't think Gia Quinto, free agent, 81 when he joined the Washington Redskins from Miami. Fourth year man out of Connecticut. He tried the Jets, the Giants, before he finally got to Miami. You know, Frank, I mentioned earlier that in 1978, some great receivers came into this game. Uh, Lawson, Jefferson, a guy named Wes Chandler. You know, when you get drafted, you wonder, you always look at the guys that got drafted out of your position and how they've done. And in five and a half years, Chandler really leads the group coming into this game with 312 receptions. But Lawson leads in yards. He's about 1,000 yards ahead with 6,000 yards. And Jefferson leads in touchdowns. He has 43 touchdowns. But it's apparent that all three were worthy number one draft choices. Well, quite a year. There's only 23 receptions that separate the three of them. That's wow. That's a five and a great set of receivers. Uh, I'd like to apologize. We just have a moment here. We are on what we call backup audio. We've had audio difficulties throughout the evening. And if the sound maybe sounds a little different than you ordinarily get out of your set, well, then our apologies. And I'm sure you're enjoying one of the best games we have covered in a long time. And this is old Joe Washington making his move the last play we saw. We take another look at it. Joe couldn't quite get it turned up in time to make a move for that goal line, but he made a good game. Joe's now got 80 yards and 15 carries, and he didn't play all that much in the first half. Most of them have come from the third quarter and here in the fourth quarter. We saw Gia Quinto over the sideline explaining just exactly how he made that magnificent catch. And since he's explained to his friends on the sideline, we'll show it to you one more time. This is a heck of a catch. Good throw by Theismann. Now watch how he keeps the feet on the ground. If you're a young receiver out there, <laughs> Mark makes Murphy. a lot of sense. Well, there was a basketball player that said there was a certain group that had a disease. They couldn't jump. They call it a certain man's disease. Yeah, I know what you're trying to get in. Yeah. Oh, no, you're trying to get into that. <laughs> That's Rich Walker. Rick Walker being assisted <laughs> off the field. Meanwhile, ready to go now. Second down and four. The Redskins have the football near the five-yard line of the pack. Joe Washington. Down goes Washington. And it was Wingo first for Green Bay. I think I'd bring uh, Riggins back in there. It'll be third down, and it will be a long three. 
Well, I think they're bringing Giaquinto in, and that's what I would do. I think the parents, they're going to have to throw on this down. Hey, you wouldn't bring Riggins in, who just runs over everybody down there. They got Well, it's third. They need four yards oh. for a first down, ah. five yards for a touchdown. I see where you are. Okay. I think they're going to throw the ball. Meanwhile, the clock kicks off. Three minutes to the end of the game. Third down, long three. And look at that offensive set. Up Washington in motion. Tyson hits Washington. Uh, Touchdown for Redskins. Mike Douglas trying to stay with Joe Washington. We've talked about him all night. He's run the ball well, but where he is really dangerous is coming out of that backfield. Well, they, this is an unusual offensive set. Both backs set way to the left. Washington goes in motion. Let's that tight end Warren clear. Comes back in. He's man-to-man -man on the linebacker. That's Mad Dog Douglas. And oh, Mad Dog couldn't keep up with him that time. They did the same thing they did with him from the backfield. They just put him in motion this time. Mark Mosley to the uprights. And now Washington is back on top. But only by two. It's 2.50 remaining in the game. First team to 50, I promise. Oh, I'd love to see 100 points, but we need two more scores for that. Let's pause five seconds and allow our sessions to identify themselves. For Green Bay, a field goal would put them back in the lead. That would necessarily assure a victory if they get it too quickly. <laughs> But they can think in terms of a field goal. Green Bay has three timeouts remaining. The Redskins have two. And Joe Washington, what a contribution he has made tonight. Really, it's been a relatively error-free game. We haven't had that many penalties and only a few turnovers. It's been fun. A lot of offense. Jeff Hayes will kick it off. Harlan Huckleby, who had a 56-yard return. Earlier in the game, is deep for Green Bay. And here comes Huckleby from the 14-yard line. And Huckleby with another good return out to the 35. And Lynn Dickey brings out a fired-up offensive unit. It's our turn, guys. He said, let's go. Yep. They're playing our dance. Let's go. It's our turn. It's our turn. <laughs> All they have to do is hold themselves this time, and they can possibly win the game. Well, Frank made a good point unless they, they score too quickly. If they score too quickly, they get the ball back. We don't have, they don't have a shot. 92 points. Bill Epps is in there, wide receiver, the great speedster out of CCU. Youngster, 12th round draft pick a year ago. He made this ball club, and he is a dangerous deep threat. He's split now, top of your screen. Looks like he might even have a man to man coverage out there. Gary Ellis, single setback. He does. Tight end, Hoffman does not hold on. Good defensive coverage. That's Monty Coleman, just activated today. His first action of the season. He is a good pass defender. Pick on ISO on Hoffman here, fighting off the line of scrimmage. And then Coleman stay right with him. Yeah, he did a good job. He really did. Second down and 10. Monty hasn't forgotten anything on his day, on his few days off. Two wide receivers in, two setbacks. Dickey. Oh, and boy. incomplete. Gary Ellis did not hold on. He did not have first down yardage. Again, Coleman back there defensively along with Ken Coffey as the Redskins now stay in their prevent. We're getting it to a, a point where we're going to have to make an interesting decision on the Green Bay side. Uh, the way they're moving the ball right now, I have a feeling that despite the field position, they're going to have to go for it on fourth down. What do you think, Don? Well, not from here, I don't think. On the well, well uh, I think they're going to say they decided on the fact that Washington's only punted once tonight. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you guys know? Third down and ten. <laughs> the stadium all of a sudden has gone quiet. Well, not now. Oh, oh my God. And a sprint for the end zone. <laughs> he loses it at the seven. It'll be first down, goal to go. Uh, Two minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the game. 
And the man that ran him down, Daryl Green, the great sprinter from Texas A&I. And when he ran Tony Dorsett down earlier this year in a game, he proved to all the football players in America that he can run anybody down <laughs> in the NFL. What a football game, and what a shot by Lynn Dickey to Gary Ellis. I didn't even, I didn't even <laughs> see this. You know what I'm talking about? I want to see it again, but it has to be. That's just, that's threading the needle, isn't it? That's Monty Coleman. It's right there behind him. He had it pretty well covered, but look at Green take off. Here's where you got to go in your zigzag. Zag. Zig. <laughs> he should have zigged. that <laughs> will bring us to the two-minute warning. He zigged when he should have zagged. Yeah. And the Packers have a first down, goal to go, eight-yard line of the Washington Redskins, and the Packers trail by two. <laughs> Gary Ellis has made a lot of big plays tonight, none bigger than the one he just pulled off with Lynn Dickey. His first down, goal to go. The Pack has the football, eight-yard line of the Washington Redskins. Two minutes remaining in the first half, and the Packers trail by two points. And, Frank, I think they have to get seven points. As you say, the danger, they may score too quickly. And look at Eddie Lee Ivory cover that football up because the Redskins are noted for tackling that ball. They've got some good old heads down there. We'll rip it out of there. You want to know why they ran the ball? They want the Redskins to use up their timeouts. And the Redskins accommodated them right there. They just called one. And they have one remaining. Hey. 153 remaining. I'm delighted to tell you that this telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience and any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the national football league is prohibited that's right all right you're talking about a teamwork that's it you guys ought to be playing the lounge somewhere <laughs> we may be it's early here in green bay green bay that's right <laughs> well why not fun it's night in green bay it sure is I've had a lot more fun here than the last couple of times I've been in Green Bay. Oh, I tell you what, last time I was here, I got a cracked rib. Did you ask for a room without you? Oh, <laughs> uh, we don't want to get into that. Okay. <laughs> Joe Gibbs. And he has watched the Packers on one of their high moments, and they've had their ups and their downs this season, and this might be the best of it all. They are two points down, 153 remaining in the game. The Redskins have one timeout. And again, Eddie Lee Ivory, his sole purpose now is to cover up the football, make sure it's not stripped. And the Redskins use their final timeout, 147 remaining in the game. And Lynn Dickey comes over to the sidelines, and what a game he's had. Dickey tonight, 22 of 31, 387 <laughs> yards, three touchdowns, one interception is not over. Third down, goal to go. The Redskins cannot stop the clock. Jan Stenerud. And if the pack does not get in with a very conservative play, I would imagine, you will see the man you just looked at, Jan Stenerud. And he's one of many of them. Eddie Lee Ivory covering the football. Neil Okowitz defensively for the Redskins. And he's played a pretty good game tonight, Okowitz has. The it's hard to find a really outstanding defensive performance tonight because there's been so much offense. But Neil's been around the ball. I think they'll take a five-yard penalty here. They uh, might take a five-yard the penalty. They're on the left hash mark, and it could be the Redskins might even decline it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah. It's a tougher angle from here than it would be from five more yards. 30-second clock ticking down, 10 seconds remaining. Obvious now that Green Bay wants the five-yard penalty. Jan Stenerud making the lazy stroll out to the huddle. There it is, delay of game. And don't think for a minute he doesn't have any pressure on him right now. You know, we're assuming that he'll make the field, uh, field goal. I think he's feeling a little bit of pressure, even though it's a short field goal. You know what? You guys are really sharp because Frank was even right. They didn't take that penalty, so they're going to leave it right there where it is. Boy, it's so nice being working with guys like you. you know, they're experts in this game. Stenerud. Green Bay has called timeout. I guess they want Yon to think about it a little bit. 
Why would Green Bay? Green do that? I don't know, but they did. Time out to ask to. Well, they did. Yeah. Hmm. I'll tell you, they'll still be and anticipating that Stenerud will be good with the kick and the Packers retake the lead. They'll still be some 50 seconds. Unfortunately, Joe Theismann will be working with no timeouts. And credit this man, Bart Starr, with a great effort. Number one, taking an offensive line. We had to move the tackle over to the guard, bring in a less experienced player. And here it is. This could be the ball game. 21-yard attempt. Do they love it in Green Bay? They love it in Green Bay. I think America is loving this one. <laughs> I sure am. So now, the pack will kick off. There will be 54 seconds for the Redskins to answer back. And all they need is the field goal. 105 points. First to 50 oh, wins. 95 points. I was talking about how great I... Come on, you went to USC, my well, man. Well, that's one of the reasons. <laughs> yeah, that is. All right. You got oh, people that, two, you have people that do the counting. All right. <laughs> it's seven and eight is 15, 40, and 40. That's good. <laughs> you get, put your shoes back on. <laughs> well, I said we're going to go to 100 points here. That's Bucky Scrivener, the punter. And what a job the holder must do. Stennerud had that head down. Classic form. We've been looking at it for so many years. Yeah, they knew it. He said, oh, it's nothing. It's just part of my job. Hey, it's just part of my job. Look at that, man. Look what it's done to him, though. 39 years of age. <laughs> just another winning field goal, maybe. Eddie Garcia will kick off. Mike Nelms is deep. I don't think he'll see the ball. Yes, they kick straight away, and it will be Nelms. And now to the 26 yard line where he's hit and hit hard. And here it comes. Again, I remind you the Redskins have no more timeouts. And that's kind of a rough road to hoe for Joe well, Weisman. All they need is the field goal, though. That's true. And one big reception, and they'll be in field goal room. I guarantee right now that Joe Theisman thinks he can do it. Well, I'm not so convinced that he can't either, so I'm not going to hum any tunes right now. <laughs> On the rollout. Now, that eats up a lot of time. And complete intended for Art Muck, and there are 43 seconds remaining in the game. We may not have this many points next Sunday night, but I expect a very similar kind of game between the L.A. Raiders and the Cowboys. I think we'll have a really good close contest. Looking forward to that one. We've had some busy people tonight. In statistical graphics, Peter Hurt, the stats and research man, Joe Cox, and, of course, our spotter for many years, Steve Bazika. Quick look at Bob Schnuck as he passes by Lynn Dickey. He's had a tremendous night for Green Bay. Second down and 10. Not a bad night for Theismann. The Redskins from their 27. Joe Washington kills the clock, steps out of bounds at his own 36-yard line, 37 seconds remaining. Remember, they only need a field goal. It's a very important play. If he could have tackled him inbounds, they would have had to come right up to the line of scrimmage and uh, Mark been Mosley, able to call another play. Mark Mosley, the field goal kicker, even though he set that tremendous record of 23 consecutive a year ago, his longest kick in his career, and it's been a long career, is 51 yards. The one questions whether he still has that leg. Third down and two. Washington once again, and Washington kills the clock with the first down at the 49 and 31 seconds remaining. All right, one more of those. <laughs> I like it. You got to give them credit. That's why they're the world champions. They got John Riggins to protect the lead, and they got Joe Washington when they have to go and get the lead. Green Bay thinking everything now to the outside. With 31 seconds, one wonders maybe if you don't call two plays in the huddle, go up the middle. That's where you'll get the big gainer. That's right. And line up in a hurry and throw it out of bounds and kill the clock. And they need to get the ball to just about Green Bay's 30-yard line for Mosley to have a chance. Don Warren, number 85, is the guy going down the middle. Theismann oh. had to throw it away to save the sack. That's right. Good move by Theismann. Kill the clock, too. 
Boy, it would have taken a lot of guts on the official to throw the flag on that one. <laughs> you know, That's right. I got a feeling everybody knew he threw it away. <laughs> that was Mark Murphy all the way up there in Joe Theismann's face. That was Murphy that was back in the backfield. From the safety from the position, position of the Green Bay. Well, no, wow, I didn't even see that. That's nice. They're throwing everything out of Martin. Well, this Second game... down, 26 seconds remains. That is Murphy. He says, come on, boy. Heisman has the time. Washington. And Washington this time to the 41-yard line. Not quite close enough. But he'll have a first down. And they have time enough for at least two more passes. This game may come down to Mosley, and we may see Mr. Gary Lewis have an effect on this game yet. Gary Lewis, of course, the designated kick blocker for Green Bay, having blocked 12 kicks, conversions, or field goals in the last 12 games. A lot of drama still to be played with 21 seconds remaining. Green Bay's a little slow getting out of their huddle. They've got a double covered set, so the middle should be open. But no, nope, they don't even have anybody down there. There he goes. There's the shot that you That's waited it. for. That is Fired it. to Charlie Brown. It's at the 21-yard line. Theismann has another play called already. 10, 9, Two eight. seconds Will they remaining. have time to get the field goal team on the field? They'll kill the clock Three. with the incompletion. <laughs> and Mark Mosley will come out. Seconds. Is that fun? <laughs> what a game. Mark Mosley now is the man on the spot. Is this fun? Three seconds on the clock, and here he is. And he is like Jan Stenerud, been in this situation so many times before. Keep an eye on number 81. Mosley on the night. Field goals, 42, 28, 31, and 28. And this will be now, if you ever a 39-yard attempt. Do a fake field goal, and you can walk in. Gary Lewis goes up. It. Mosley misses to the right. Oh, and the Packers Whoa. have won the game. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and the Packers oh, fans are coming out onto the field. Mark Mosley missing from 39 yards out. A tremendous comeback effort on the part of the Redskins. They started deep in their own territory with no timeouts remaining. Theismann doing a masterful job with Joe Washington to get into field goal position. And it missed to the right. And a tremendous victory for the Green Bay Packers to now draw to within one game of Minnesota in their division, Central Division, NFC. While Washington falls to five and two, but maintaining the second place the party's over. in the NFC East behind undefeated Dallas. Say that all good things must end. Way to go, Bart. All right, Bart, milk it. Right, the this the Green Bay part. Packer <laughs> football team is back on the field they're taking bows i don't think i've ever seen that i never have either and i tell you this is really an Here exciting football game look at lewis go up in the middle that's gary lewis you know he may have blocked it if it was straight and true you know he, he if he didn't he could have affected it yeah right you know just a little off to the right we yeah. hope you've been able to be with us throughout the night as the packers and the Redskins have seesawed back and forth. And this man, Lynn Dickey, what a show he put on. Lynn Dickey, who has missed 53 games in his career with injuries, a broken leg, a dislocated hip. He came out along with a fired up Packer defense. And they have defeated the Washington Redskins. Bedlam, Curly Lambeau Stadium in Green Bay. We'll be back in a moment. Uh.
We've seen things we've never seen in football before tonight, particularly the Packers coming out to take a little bow at the end of this game. Let's go back, pick up just the final moments of drama. Jan Stenerud, 21-yard effort, drilling it through the uprights. This was after a remarkable pass, too, Frank, when he threw the ball to Gary Ellis, which was a really good, I don't see how he did that, but he got him down to the eight-yard line. That was the thrill of victory, and coming up, wait the a minute. Of defeat. Wait a minute, what? Mark Mosley, after a tremendous effort on the part of the Redskins offensive unit to get it into field goal range, misses from 39 oh. yards out. And you think kickers are not affected? He's once again, the final score, Green Bay 48, Washington 47. Tonight on Nightline, President Reagan's first thousand days in office. What does his record mean in light of the upcoming presidential election? That's tonight on Nightline, after your local late news. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines, the official airline of the 1984 LA Olympic Games and the proud sponsor of the United States Olympic team. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Recognized around the world as the leader in sports television, we will see you Sunday night from Texas Stadium. The Dallas Cowboys and the Los Angeles Raiders. Be with us. The most points that has ever been scored on a Monday night football game, so you better believe the fans got their money's worth tonight. And I look at that 47 points on the board that the Redskins put up there, and yet I feel like the Packers played their best defensive game this year. Now, I'm standing here with John Meyer, who's the defensive coordinator. John, do you agree with that? Well, I know our guards played their hearts out tonight, and uh, I think we only made them punt one time. I think our main function tonight was to uh, play defense so the offense could get their breath a little bit. But uh, I think the guys really did play hard. The score uh, and the yardage might not indicate it, but I think it was one of our better defensive efforts. The Skins have averaged just over 30 points this year. Tonight they scored 47, and yet the Packers, they came out here tonight. The defense seemed extremely fired up, more so than I've seen them. Well, we, you know, we kind of embarrassed ourselves a couple weeks ago on Monday Night Television. We wanted to come back and show the pe people around the country what we were made of. Your scheme tonight, I think, was to stop John Riggins. Yeah, it was, and then John didn't play a whole lot the second half, and it kind of threw us off kilter a little bit with uh, Washington back there, and uh, he's a little bit faster than John. I was going to say that did seem to backfire because Washington got a lot of yards on you in the second half. Yeah, he runs the same type of plays that John does, only he gets there a little bit quicker. So what did you try to do in the second half to, to contain him? Well, we tried to get our ends upfield a little bit more than we had in the first half, and we just tried to hang on and slow him down a little bit. Mike Douglas had a great game. Oh, the, the first series of the game. Defense. Well, you have to be concerned because when you give up that many points, that's uh, a deep concern to you. But I think you also could see that the game was that tight. Uh, offense, offensively, Washington was red hot. They just uh, they did everything practically flawless tonight. And uh, even with our defense playing as hard as they could, it was just very difficult to keep them down. Mark, what does this mean for coming games now? Well, the first thing we have to do is, is naturally recover from the thrill and the exhilaration of this win. It's a tremendous win. I, I wanted the team to stay back out there and, and salute the crowd, which I think was very instrumental tonight. This crowd was really turned on. And that's a, a brief way and a, a somewhat insignificant way to say thank you. And yet I think it speaks very loudly to them. And so I wanted them to stay there and, and say thank you to them. But we have to get this behind us and move on because we have a, a very tough opponent, a divisional opponent coming in here in just a few days. And so we have to get ready to play them as we did coming off the loss against the Giants. And that's that's going to be our task and going to be a real challenge for us. Mark, you said during the course of the week you thought the team was ready. Did you really believe that at the time? Uh, yes, I did. Yes, I did, Darrell. I, just the way we practiced and uh, there, was a, uh, there was a calm intensity about what we were doing during the week. Uh, a reassuring type of thing, and I just felt good about it. But that's that's hard to put your finger on, and sometimes you're wrong. But uh, I'm I'm delighted uh, I was right because we were really ready to play, and uh, we were ready to play defensive. I know we gave up a lot of points, but uh, you could see from the way the game opened that they came to play also. And I, I think you just have to salute Washington and say that they're a tremendously powerfully strong offensive football team, and they are. 
Well, there you have Packer coach Brian's tires opening comments to the post-game uh, news conference. Obviously very happy, as is uh, the 55,000 fans in Lambeau Field today. The excitement of that game was not having to listen to Howard Cosell. That was the most exciting part of my night. Yeah, there are times he should be shot, no question about it. But other than that, it was a great game. I've never felt electricity like that before in the field. You'd never hear anybody complain about the high salaries of pro athletes if every game was like last night. The Packers and Washington Redskins did not play football last night. They put on a show that will never be forgotten. From the very first series, you knew this game would be something special. Joe Washington can't handle this pass. Mike Douglas handles the fumble and scores the first of the 11 touchdowns in this ball game. Well, it feels good to go in that end zone. I see why James and enjoy spiking so much now. You know, I mean, it's just... When you're helping your team and you're making big plays like that and uh, getting everybody excited, you know, it's, it's the greatest, you know. Touchdown number two. John Riggins fumbles on the goal line. The Redskins recover and the score is tied at seven. The teams traded field goals and then Green Bay went back on top by seven when Lynn Dickey goes up top to Paul Kaufman for the 36-yard score. You know, it was a team effort. Every pass, uh, every play is a team effort. And, you know, if the line doesn't keep him out, you know, he can't throw to me. So the line gave him great protection tonight, and he threw the ball. And, uh, you know, if that happens, we have the copy receivers that are going to get open. John Riggins had 98 yards on the night. He scored this touchdown to tie it at 17. I think they were uh, maybe upset by some remarks that may have somebody on our team may have made. And, that, you know, they were going to show the world that uh, they weren't really ranked 28th in the league. When it comes to stopping a rush, I believe somebody told me that before the game, that they were ranked 28th when it comes to stopping a run, but they didn't play like it tonight. The Packers pulled a few tricks on a Bob Schnelker's playbook on third and short. Eddie Lee Ivory sweeps right, throws left to a wide open Paul Kaufman. But I thought that the play calling of Bob Schnelker was the finest that I've ever seen in a lifetime, and the execution of it was a close second, because he called a magnificent game tonight. Dickey went back to Kaufman for the touchdown. Green Bay led 24-17. Well, I think the key to the game was their offensive line. Uh, just super protection throughout the whole night against a pretty good pass rushing team. And uh, uh, they knew it was going to be a big challenge. They knew that was going to be uh, probably the key to the game. And they, they bucked up and um, they, they took the challenge on. They did a hell of a job. The Packers took an 11-point lead in the third quarter. Gary Ellis breaks one 24 yards. It's a team thing, and uh, everybody, you don't move the ball like we did tonight uh, without everybody doing a job, and uh, that's the thing. And, and we have a hell of an offense, and uh, and we can move the ball like that. Uh. Two Mark Mosley field goals, and this Joe Theismann, the Joe Washington touchdown pass, put the skins up 33-31. The Packers pulled ahead 38-33 when Gary Lewis scores on the reverse to open the fourth quarter. Then John Riggins scored from one yard out, and the roller coaster ride continued at Lambeau Field. The pace was so fast out there. You, we like to control the tempo of a football game, but this thing got in a hand in a hurry. I mean, it was like, uh, you know, you, you didn't actually, I wasn't actually on the bench more than four or five minutes at any stretch of time, you know, by the clock. Green Bay regained the lead when Lynn Dickey fired his third touchdown pass. Mike Mead scores his first pro touchdown, making it 45-40 Packers. The Redskins came back once again and took the lead 47-45 when the Joe and Joe show hits again. Theismann to Washington for six. With the clock winding down, the Packers offense comes up with another biggie. Dickey pinpoints one to Gary Ellis. Did you think he had the touchdown? Well, I, I knew I had it, except... I knew there was one guy out there that was going to check, uh, check me down, but that'd probably be the world class friend they got there, who same guy that ran Tony Dorsett down. I know if he ran Tony Dorsett down, he's going to run me down. <laughs> so, uh, but I tried, though. With under a minute left, Jan Stenerud hits a chip shot, and the Packers are back in the lead, 48-47. The Skins had one last chance, one of the most accurate kickers in the NFL. Mark Mosley goes wide right with this 39-yard field goal attempt, the clock winds down. Green Bay beats the Super Bowl champions in a thriller. 48-47. We've missed it. <laughs> Went off to the right. That's about it. It's, you know, when you miss one, you miss one. And there's no reason for it. You just miss it. Oh, sure I watched. I cheered like mad when it went wide to the right. <laughs> If you thought it was a rough game, you are right. Redskin running back John Riggins is in traction in a Washington hospital tonight. He has a nerve injury to his lower back, but he should be ready to play next Sunday.